Happy Sabbath, everybody. Happy Sabbath, happy Sabbath. Hope the week was a good one for everybody. Hope the week was a good one. Um, I can't necessarily say that I had a bad week, you know. I had a challenging week, but it wasn't bad. Um, I had some... Well, I've been having car trouble for some time now. But you know, before this week was out, God allowed me to see a different perspective from it, you know? Because a brother of mine on some days has been assisting me with taking Taraji to school. And um, he shared a perspective that I never thought about. He said that it was really a blessing taking her to school every day and having me travel with them because each day we would talk about matters concerning the Bible and prophecy and so on. And he said that it was very good fellowship. And he said it was really a blessing to his soul. And on days that I don't get assistance from him, I take a taxi and take her to school. And... Um, an instant happened today where a non-Adventist brother, um, basically, I, I used his taxi to pick her up from school and take her back home and drop her off at school. And, you know, I was sharing some things. Um, he's not from our church, so some of the things that he was hearing was very new and different. But he said that the spirit was testifying in his spirit that all that I'm sharing with him is true. And, you know, I even brought the country living message to him. And he accepted it as true. And, you know, I was sharing with him that, you know, we are closer to the end and people believe and so on. And, you know, some things that some of the Adventists would have a problem with this brother was just accepting it as the truth coming from God himself, you know? And I realized today that if my car was up and running, more than likely I would not have had the opportunity to fellowship the way I did with my brother in Christ, a Seventh-day Adventist, and I wouldn't have got the chance to witness to another brother who is not of our faith, you know? So, you know, the Bible did say that all things work together for good for them that love God. And I saw the good today in my car not working. You know, for a number of weeks now, I've been asking God, what is the purpose behind the car not working? And, you know, today I got the chance to see that evening that God has a plan and God can use it for good. So tonight we'll be looking at the events connected with the close of probation. And I see some friends coming in, so I'll pause a little while and then we will proceed with this evening study. You know, but glory to God for even using apparent bad things for his own honor and glory, you know. Praise God for that. All right, so let us pray. Righteous Heavenly Father, tonight as we study about the events connected with the close of probation, I pray, God, that you'll guide this study. I pray that you will help us all to gain something from this study. Please teach us, God, your will for us as we look at these matters. Help us to understand this journey of life better. And we pray, God, that 
You will bless us exceedingly. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. So it was Brother Leo that said that, you know, it would be beneficial to look at the overall timeline as to how God's people are going to transition to the Sunday and the close of probation. So by God's grace, I attempted to delineate these events as best as I could, and I hope it will prove to be a blessing this evening. Really hope it will prove to be a blessing. So, the beast from the abyss, the beast from the abyss prepares the way for the beast from the earth. In Revelation 11, a beast is mentioned that comes out of the abyss or abusus. Um, and the word abusus in the Septuagint, which is the Greek version of the, 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 the Bible, um, translated by 70 scholars, this Septuagint uses the word abusus in Genesis. In Genesis, where it speaks about the world being um, void and without form, the word there in the Septuagint is the word abusus. So a bottomless pit is somewhere that is not organized. It's somewhere chaotic. It's something that 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 is 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 just without any order. And when you study out Revelation 11, it points to the French Revolution and nationalized atheism. As the beast, the beast from the abyss. You know, that is a study in and of itself. Um, we can go through it for, uh, at another sitting, but um, I'm just taking it for granted that many of us are exposed to that. But, um, you know, it is a study in and of itself. I see a hand, brother Antonio. Um, indeed. Um, I, you may have mentioned the word um, abuse. Uh, it brings us, yes, and it brings us back to Genesis where the Bible says the world will form and void. I mean, so, the, so in our words, when we look at Revelation 11, right, we're going to appear back in time. And if, if we go to history, that's just this is clear to us, we appear back in time where a country um was without form or void, you know, where, where there was anarchy, where there was lawlessness, where and so it's not only form and void, I mean anarchy, but also form and void a spiritual knowledge, you know, a spirituality, a yeah. biblical knowledge. And if you yeah. look back in time, there was only one country that uh, fits that criteria. One country that says, listen, we don't we don't believe in common fact. We we want to erase God um out of out of, out of the out of the lives of people instead of having a seven day cycle. We just have a ten day cycle, and and every ten day, you know, people will go in the street and celebrate and debunk it and all everything that that was Ill irreligious, eh? and that was actually Amen. the time of the French Revolution. Eh? So, Bible is very specific in, in pinpointing histories eh? or events of histories. Eh? But continue. Uh, thank you for that, Antonio. And the Bible says that it was spiritually called Saddam and Egypt, and Egypt does not, Egypt did not recognize the authority of God. And Saddam was known for sex, sexual licentiousness. And both these ele elements were in France in the periods of time from 1789 to 1798. You know, in 1791, the, the Senate actually legalized pedestry. Pedestry in, in, in France, pedestry is where an older homosexual man will court a, a younger one and introduce him to that lifestyle. And that was legalized in France in the year 1791. So that is how bad it was. But this is what prepares the way for the beast from the earth. That is the United States of America. So it's the beast from the abyss. Atheism, spiritual atheism, that will prepare the way for the beast from the earth which is the United States in prophecy, it says at the same time, anarchy is seeking to sweep away all law, not only divine, but human. The centralizing of wealth and power 
the vast combinations for the enriching of the few at the expense of the many, the combinations of the poorer classes for the defense of their interests and claims, the spirit of unrest, of riot, and bloodshed, the worldwide dissemination of the same teachings that led to the French Revolution, all are tending to involve the world in a struggle similar to that which convulsed France. This is taken from the book Education. So the matters that are taking place in our world is leading to matters that reflect the, the issues that were found in the French Revolution. Now, God is weighing our characters, our conduct, and our motives in the balances of the sanctuary. It will be a fearful thing pronounced, wanting in love and obedience by our Redeemer. So Testimonies Volume 3 is outlining that God is actually weighing us in the balances of the sanctuary, you know. So people will be careless in the last hours of probation. Men and women are in the last hours of probation and yet are careless and stupid. Can you imagine... Ellen White used those terms. She says that men and women are careless and stupid and ministers have no power to arouse them. They are asleep themselves of mercy. Sleeping preachers preaching to a sleeping people. So I never said these words. Ellen White said these words. Testimonies, volume 2, page 2, sorry, volume 2, page 337. Um, Brother Skula, see your hand. Brother Skula, see your hand. All right, we'll proceed. All right, so I see a question for Revelation chapter 17 and explanation. I will seek to do that one of these evenings. Um, about the seven heads, but it it, it takes a, a, a bit of time. But when it talks about the one is that rises out of the bottomless pit, it is talking about the resurgence of the papacy because it was the one wounded in the bottomless pit context. It was wounded by nationalized atheism and it will reascend after the United States rules for a short space of time. But, but that is a complete study in and of itself. It's a complete study in and of itself. Um, so it says here, no one is saved by works. They are saved only by faith in Christ and by his grace. But you can be lost by your works. What is being weird? Angels are watching the development of character and weighing moral works. All our words and acts are passing in review before God. It is a fearful, solemn time. Testimonies, volume 1, page 242. Men are weighed in the balance and phone wanting when they are living in practice of any known sin. Testimonies to ministers, page 440. Ellen White wrote, the Lord is coming. Alarm must be sounded. The people who profess the truth are unready. Should their probation close now, they would be weighed in the balance and found wanting. Some have not made earnest efforts to overcome. They have not realized the danger of continuing in sin and have become almost content where they are. Many who nominally assent to the truth will fail to enter the kingdom of God because they do not in their daily life practice that which they profess. The Review and Herald, November 13. 1833. So she's here speaking on the process of judgment. Now, I've personally come to see the book of Job as an example or ensample of the experience of God's true people. You know, Job, I believe, is a book that exists in the Bible to show how Satan's anger will be re released upon those who love God. Those who eschew evil, just like Job. And because of that, I wanted to bring some examples of the kind of people we have to be to prepare for the days ahead. 
Now, Job experienced the righteousness which is by faith. Job was a person who, when they weighed, who when weighed by God, was found to be a perfect man. Job 29, verse 12 to 17 says, I delivered the poor who cried out, the fatherless and the one who had no helper. The blessing of a perishing man came upon me, and I caused the widow's heart to sing for joy. I put on righteousness. So Job says that he was clothed in righteousness. He says, I put on righteousness, and it clothed me. My justice was like a robe and a turban. I was eyes to the blind, and I was feet to the lame. I was a father to the poor, and I searched out the case that I did not know. So Job never listened to hearsay and gossip. He verified matters before he took it as the gospel. He says, I searched out the case that I did not know. I broke the fangs of the wicked and plucked the victim from his teeth. So when God calls somebody a perfect man, Job is showing what the standard of God's perfection is. It is a lifestyle where he delivered the poor who cried out, the fatherless and one who had no helper. The blessing of a perishing man came upon him. He never saw somebody dying and ignored them. He wasn't indifferent to suffering. He says, I put on righteousness. So he was clothed with Christ's righteousness. And justice was like a robe and a turban. He was eyes to the blind and feet to the lame. So Isaiah, Ellen White says, Isaiah 58 is present true to the people of God. So while we think about the various reforms, we have to reform our character more importantly than anything else. We have to be cognizant of the state of affairs with our fellow human beings. So even the medical missionary work, we can't just do it by route. We have to have genuine concern for people. And medical missionary work is not just finding people who are diseased with cancer and diabetes and lifestyle disease. When we give any form of benevolent benevolent affection to our fellow human being and we just care for the blind and we try to ensure that they cross the road safely or that they are well cared for or if they are out of a job we ensure that they are eating food that is medical missionary work when we read the book ministry of healing we realize that it's a broad and comprehensive work you know so it is very important to have health reform and dress reform and all these things but it is how we live that comes up in the judgment. Ellen White says that the reason why Christ said the poor will always be among us, she said that the poor in this world exist to judge us. Can you imagine that? The reason we have poor people in the earth is to judge God's people. So if we are indifferent to the poor, to the poor we, we are not looking very good in God's judgment. Job goes on to say, have I not wept for him who was in trouble? Has not my soul grieved for the poor? Job 30, verse 25. Notice what he says in Job 31, 6. Let me be weighed on honest scales that God may know my integrity. If I have despised the cause of my male or female servant when they complain against me, what then shall I do when God rises up? When he punishes, how shall I answer him? Verses 13 and 14. You know, we are not even known to be people who are fair to our workers as a denomination. We are not known for fairness enough. And Job is here saying, let me be weighed with honest scales. I wonder whose scales are those. Could it be the scales of God judge, God's judgment? And he says that God may know my integrity. If I have despised the cause of my male or female servant, so they don't pay them or treat them well. That comes up before God. So sometimes we are looking about regular things and, you know, outward reform. But our lives, our lives, the way we treat each other. It's not so wonderful, but that is what comes up in the judgment. If I have kept the poor from their desire or caused the eyes of the widow to fail or eat my morsel by myself, my word, <laughs> so that the fatherless could not eat of it. But from my youth, I reared him as a father. So somebody who was a fatherless person, Job took them on as his, as his own children. And from my mother's womb, I guided the widow. If I... If I have seen anyone perish for lack of clothing, have mercy. Are we, help, are we clothing people as Seventh-day Adventists? Are we providing food and nourishment for people outside of the church and inside the church? 
Job says, if I have seen anyone perish for lack of clothing or any poor man without covering, if his heart has not blessed me and if he was not worn with the fleece of my sheep, if I raise my hand against the fatherless, when I saw I had help in the gate, then let my arm fall from my shoulder. Let my arm be torn from the socket. So Job is saying he was many things to the people of God. People who we saw in dire straits. Job always rendered assistance. Job always rendered assistance. And God said this man was perfect. So perfection is not just outward modifications of the life. Just dressing up the right way and you know, covering the extremities of our limbs. That is very important. But perfection is a lifestyle. So we are talking about events connected to the judgment, but it makes no sense to know what the events are if we are unprepared when judgment comes. When probation closes and we are unprepared because we spent a lifetime being selfish and having confidence in the modification of our lives, in modifying how we eat and modifying how we dress, and we were indifferent to our fellow human beings. That will not stand in the judgment. That will not stand in the judgment. You know, the Bible says that if you do my will, you shall know of the doctrine. So when you are prepared to do God's will, God is going to make you understand doctrine very well. So, but, but, but doing his will comes first. Job goes on to say, if I have rejoiced at the destruction of him who hated me. So you shouldn't even laugh at the enemies. You know? Job never even practiced that enough. You know? So when people hated Job and bad things happened to them, Job didn't laugh. If I have rejoiced at the destruction of him who hated me, I lifted up myself when evil found him. Indeed, I have not allowed my mouth to sin by asking for a curse on his soul. If the men of my tent have not said, who is there that has not been satisfied with his meat? But no sojourner had to lodge in the street of mercy. Says before Abraham, this hospitality thing was important for perfection. Because Job never even allowed people to sojourn out in the street. For I have opened my doors to the traveler of mercy. So this man really went the extra mile. And God could say he was perfect. Proper education in the truth prepares us to stand in the close of probation. So yes, it is good to have good deeds. But what else is, 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 is important for us to stand in this close of probation? Sister White says, now as never before, we need to understand the true science of education. If we fail to understand this, we shall never have a place in the kingdom of God. This is life eternal, that they might know the, the only true God. I you know my favorite thing to say about this, epinosis. It means accurate knowledge of God. This is life eternal that they might know thee the only true God and Jesus Christ whom thou hast sent. If this is the price of heaven, shall not our education be conducted on these lines? Christ must be everything to us. And to us a child is born, and to us a son is given, and the government shall be upon his shoulder. And his name shall be called Wonderful Counselor, the Mighty God, the Everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace. What a foundation is laid here for the faith of those who shall live in all ages. When Christ ascended to heaven, he ascended as our advocate. We have always had, have, 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 we always have a friend at court. And from on high, Christ sends his representative to every nation, kindred, tongue, and people. The Holy Spirit gives the divine anointing to all who receive Christ. So, it, so Ellen White says, that, that if we fail to understand true education, the true science of education, um, we shall never have a place in the kingdom of God. And brethren, to a great degree, most of us don't know the true science of education. You know, most of us don't know the true science of education because most of us are not exposed to true education, nor are we supporting true education. And Ellen White says that if we don't understand this science, we will never have a place in the kingdom of God. Um, Sister Kalama Sayahan. Sister Kalam. Yes, happy Sabbath, everyone. As I listen to you, Brother Wazari, a particular situation came to my mind, and I just want to know how 
how how would that situation be judged in a case where um I'm trying to see if I can summarize it as best as possible. A particular church sister was her son was ill, very ill, to the point where he had to live on the seaside somewhere in Clarendon, far from radiation, because he was having some connection towards radiation. However, his mom is uh, that person that will go to every individual she can host once she hear the person is ill she take her own money you know she buy them stuff and all of that and she do that like all her life that's what she loves to the point where you would say she kind of neglect her family somewhat because she consume all of her energy in taking care of persons however when he took ill right um he said to me uh, my mother went around different different persons host and she helped them and not even one person upon it from the church never come to visit him on that seaside he said it was his father's co-worker who actually came you know to assist whatever way they could because remember say never have no bathroom he had nothing pretty much so you know he probably gonna need food and you know Little, little stuff, maybe clothes to wash and you, you know, the, but the, the, the fact that I'm saying is based on what you're saying is about how we reach out to people. And I looked at that. I felt bad for the church that time, a couple of years ago, um, because I was saying, wow, because I really didn't look at it at that like that in terms of you know oh my mother is doing this and you know nobody in the church so that kind of um weaken his faith somewhat because he's saying i grew up in church my mother you know all the household and look what happened to me and i never see anybody i mean they could be praying you know brother wazari yeah but based on what you what, what? were saying in terms of reaching out because yeah. i was thinking about our church member too because they do have persons who come to church that are poor do we reach out to them as well you know how we treat each other so it all begins in the house of the lord so how would god judge a situation like that i know as i said they might be praying at the time for him but sometimes you know visiting yeah. a person says a lot so uh, you, you know what says you know mm -hmm. says um ellen white Make says something. ellen white says something that 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 really means a lot to me Mm -hmm. She says, he who does nothing but pray will soon cease to pray, you know? And um, it, it, it is really saying that if we have an abstract religion where we don't do nothing but pray, our religion is going to die eventually. Our religious experience is going to die out. And prayer is such a beautiful thing. But it has become something that, that when people say it, I feel uncomfortable. Because oftentimes it is used to just mask indifference. Like you want to appear pious. So you just say, oh, I'm going to pray for you. But you, you actually can do something some of the times. And at those points in time when you can actually act, God requires you to act. And we are conscious when we are required to act. The Holy Spirit is faithful to nudge us and trust, hey, you can do something in this situation, you know? But oftentimes we use prayer, the word prayer, as a, as a shield, like some kind of false piety to say, I care about you, but I'm going to be indifferent. You know? And, 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 and the book of James talks about when we see people destitute of this world's goods. I would tell him to have faith and be well. God isn't pleased with that, you know? So right. when we are in a position to help people, we I actually should help. Oh, so, sorry, sorry, sister. Uh, no man, I don't cut you. Sorry to cut you, rather. I was saying it was one year he was there for so just think about that too. The length of yeah. time he was there. Yeah. Sometimes, sometimes we, we, we just pray, but it is a shield. You know, I'm not saying all the time that is the case, but I'm saying there are times when the word prayer is used as a shield for indifference. Like when we can actually act. We just say, oh, my brother, I'm going to pray for you. But the book of James, James, the apostle James says, you know, when we see a man destitute of this world's good and we tell them to, to have faith and be well, and we leave them like that. You know, he points out that God isn't pleased, pleased at all with it. You know, so we, when we can help, we, we really should. We really should. Sister Rennie? Yes. 
I wanted to add to that. Um, and I'm going to use my story and to just to kind of provide like a background to the, the text I'm going to share. You know, when I was growing up in the church, I was active, very active, super active, right? I was, you know, regular young person or whatever in a pathfinder. I left my church at Mayfin as the director of the Pathfinder Club. And the pastor that was there at the time, I'm telling you, everything he wants to do or to be done, I mean, call, every little thing he called me and text me. And I was put to work. You know, they like to say, put the young people to work. I was put to work. <laughs> and it was time, when it was time to go to university, when I went to university, I said, I cannot manage the Pathfinder directorship. <laughs> and school work so I, I was living in Kingston at the time and so on so I resigned and I will tell you this that the moment I resigned was the moment the text and the call stopped coming not even a text to say sis I'm praying for you I hope everything goes well you understand nothing it was it was really it was almost it was it I, I was very bewildered very by the situation it was any if it wasn't that all right so i'm going to share it i'm going to share this so, so ezekiel 34 talks about she, the shepherds of the is of israel reproved i'm not going to read all of it but if you go through it jesus talks about the same thing you're talking about brother was i where verse 3 says you eat the fat talking about the shepherds you eat the fat and you and you clothe with and you clothe you with the wool you kill them that are fed, but you feed not the flock. The disease have you not strengthened, neither have you healed that which was sick, neither have you bound up that which was broken, neither have you brought again that which was driven away, neither have you. And Jesus, I got you and I tell him, say, you know, do nothing. And you think about it, me say, listen, I very late in my Christian experience, me, me, me realize, say, Elders once upon a time used to visit people and pray with them and study with them. Very late. A very late in my Christian experience, me realized say pastors once upon a time used to visit people and pray with them. Right? You know, because as a young person, you really think about those things. And you only not go through problems. You don't really think about those things. Right? And Jesus got you. And he said, they were scattered. Verse 5. Because there is no shepherd and they became meat to all the beasts of the field when they were scattered. And you know what Jesus said? All right then. Since you not going to do it, me I going to do it. And Jesus come and he say, for thus saith the Lord God, this is verse 11. Behold, I, even I, will both search my sheep and seek them out. Amen. As a shepherd seeketh out his flock in the day that he is among his sheep, Amen. that they are scattered, so will I seek out my sheep and me tell you say. <laughs> when I was I, I first time we read the Bible on Christ, so because me I tell you say, I'm myself, I'm myself, <laughs> I'm myself, me say, I'm tell you say, if it was not for Jesus, seek me out. I'm telling you, if it was not for Jesus seeking me out, I was like a sheep scattered yes, without man. a shepherd. Yes, Nobody man. cared. Nobody cared. Nobody cares. And I'm telling you, brethren, don't keep your eyes. Don't put your eyes upon nobody else. Don't put your eye upon the brother. The sister will sit down beside you. Don't put your eye upon the pastor. Don't put your eye upon the elder. Because I'm telling you, you will be discouraged. You yeah, will be man. discouraged. You will lose your way. And one day I was saying, this is long now, long now after. One day I was um praying to the Lord. And, you know, sometimes, some, a lot of times we get into the culture of, you know, saying, boy, this wrong with the church and that wrong with the church. And and I was, I brought it to the Lord. Because sometimes we talk about it with ourselves, but we don't read it. And we bring it to the Lord. And you know? I said, God, why your people them stay so? Why your people them stay so? And I tell God, say, we don't like them. Right? Because God, because it's a problem. It's a big problem you know, because we need to be united. We need to, there needs to be a fostering of unity. But God wants us to bring our problems to him, don't he? And me tell Amen. God to me don't me tell God to me don't like him people them. Them not nice. Right? And me tell him I complain. I complain to God about the problems them in the church. And Jesus said to me, say, God said to me, say, 
your eyes, you're looking, your eyes are not on me. Your eyes, them, you reminded me of the story of Peter, right? He reminded me of the story of Peter when he stopped, look on Jesus, and he started looking on the window at boisterous, and he started to sing. Amen. I mean, tell us that if it was for anybody else, Bridget, if it was for any pastor or the pastor and the elder, they operate and the Bridget them operate. I would have gone into the church a long time. But if I leave the church like Peter, I have to ask myself, where to whom will I go? Amen. Because Jesus looked upon this broken church, the brokenness of the church, and him said, Whoa, this are the this are the best thing for earth. A best thing. He said, This is not no better no day. Right? And when I was scattered. Like a sheep without a shepherd. They, nothing better never did have neither, right? There's nothing better than what is here. And so we have to really make the best out of out of the situation. So when they go on with the antics, and when they not come visit you, <laughs> keep your eyes on Jesus. That's all we have to say. Amen. And you know, God is so faithful though. In the worst of times, he will send somebody. God is never without a witness, you know. When my when my wife passed away, it's like my whole world mash up. And I remember a brother Minot called me. And I was trying to indicate to Brother Minot that I wanted to be left alone, really, and just stay at home. And Brother Minot insists, no, it is not good for you to be alone at home. And him forced the issue, come for me and carry me and Taraji go walk gardens. The Sabbath. And he saw the pressure start come off my brain. You know, the pressure of the law start come off my brain. And then Brother Schooler, then him insists again that it's not good for me to be alone in the house. And Brother Schooler carry me to Heartlands. And week after week, him come and pick me up. And it's like being there just refresh my spirit. Believe me, it's why I really love the brethren there. Trust me. I'm going to tell them tomorrow. That reminds me for tomorrow's Sabbath. Really, really love the Bridget dear. Really, really love them. To, to the core I'm a be. You know? So, even when you don't have everybody doing it, God, God always have somebody who is listening to his voice. And, you know, somebody who allow themselves to realize that somebody else is going through something. You know? And I am and very grateful to God for that. Very, very grateful that boy, even in the darkest of times, God can still move up on a heart to say, yeah, you know, he might go through something now, reach out to him and, and, and help him through it, you know? So, you're so right, sister, so we have to always keep our eyes on Jesus and, and, and God is always faithful, you know? Mm -hmm. That is and, always faithful. And if he can't find a human being, he will find a way directly to come for the heart. I will yes. tell you, and I say this all the time, that the Bible studies on a Friday night was what really helped to bring me back, bring me, you know, back on course. It was, a, as I, I tell you all the time, it was like a oasis in a desert, in a desert land. So there's That'd always, right, That'd we always, create always makes a, a a a way he always provides a a, a relief for his amen. people amen uh brother cash we and i see your hand thank you for that sister ren good evening brethren good evening brother cash we don't you don't mind you know just listening to sister Rene, i recognize that there are many within the church was the similar issue. And it in, in a larger context, it is the, the, the son, the brother of the prodigal son who was at home. And you see, many of us, well, I, I won't put myself in because I wasn't brought up in the church. But many of those who were brought up in the church and has not experienced God in a personal way, but just because of association and parental alliance, or allegiance, they would have been forced to go to church and to observe Sabbath and just the whole rites and ceremony. And not having a personal experience, will find themselves in similar situations as Sister Renee. And I, 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 I see that those of us 
who would have studied to an extent and would have investigated our way into the message will not have that issue that Sister Rainey would have would have um would have had to deal with. Because I would have seen many persons come and go. I would have, I would have gone into the church and seen many persons. And when you have a have a conversation with them, you realize that they really don't know what the message is about or what God expects of us. So so I I I know your your I, I can understand your situation, Sister Rene. And that is why after listening to you, Brother Wazari, and I realized that those of us who study a little bit more than those in the regular lines, sometimes will not understand what those who would have been brought up from babe to adulthood, what their relationship is all about. And they might not even know the fundamental, they would even know the three angels' message because it's just really rites and ceremonies, rites and rites and programming. And if they don't have a personal encounter with Christ, they will fall, they will fall just like they are, the prodigal brother's son, and just like the Jews in Christ's days. Amen. Amen. Thank you for that, my brother. So, like the feedback and the discussion, but we have some ground, we have some ground to cover. Still have a little ground to cover. Um, but I thank you guys for the feedback. Now, what else can make us stand in the judgment? God's purpose in giving the third angel's message to the world is to prepare a people to stand true to him during the investigative judgment. This is the purpose for which we establish and maintain our publishing houses, our schools, our sanitariums, hygienic restaurants, treatment rooms, and food factories. This is our purpose in carrying forward every line of work in the cause. Manuscript 154, 1902. So these institutions actually help to prepare people to stand. You know, anybody knows me knows that that is one of my favorite things to tune in on because it is often ignored. Now, establishing church schools a part of country living. We know that country living is required just before the close of probation. But in association with country living, we are still to be establishing church schools. Now, look at this, this statement properly. Take the time and look at this statement properly. It says, before the overflowing scourge shall come upon the dwellers of the earth, the Lord calls upon all who are Israelites indeed to prepare for that event. Now, I just want to pause and ask the question. What is the overflowing scourge here? Please, can somebody explain what is, what is the overflowing scourge? What here is being spoken of as the overflowing scourge? The son in law. The son in law. Trouble. The time of trouble. So let me read substituting those two terms. Before the time of trouble, or before the son in law shall come upon the dwellers of the earth, the Lord calls upon all who are Israelites indeed to prepare for that event. So, how are the Israelites indeed? Those who are Israelites indeed to prepare for the event. To parents, he sends the warning cry, gather your children into your own houses. Gather them away from those who are disregarding the commandments of God, who are teaching and practicing evil. So look at this part now. Get out of the large cities as fast as possible. So that we know that is country living. But look at what is enjoined to it. Establish church schools. Give your children the word of God as the foundation of all your education. So many of us want to go to the country, but we don't have a plan to establish any schools. Some of us don't have children, so we don't care for those who have children. But that is a part of this, the, the country living message, that there should be a process of establishing church schools. So we are not being called to go to the country in this last preparation work, to the idlers. You know, I was talking to a brother and he was insisting that institutions don't play a part institutions don't play a part um, in, in, in the last work. We should just prepare for, for, for 
um, a Sunday and, and, and just pray and tell people that one is coming. Um, so, so, you know, I, I showed him statements like this and unfortunately he's still unresolved in it. He's still resolved in his, in his position that the preparation is just to tell people something abstract that one day a great Sunday law will pass. But God doesn't agree with him. You know, it says the servants of God are sealed before the time of trouble. Um, I see two hands. Uh, I don't like to insist on people making short points, but just for the sake of time. I see two hands, Sister Renee and Antonio. Uh, sure. Just to comment on your point, right? Mm -hmm. You mentioned the beast from the bottom of the speech, right? And we, we talked about um, in the French Revolution, we, when the French Revolution came, you know, certain ideologies, you know, communism, um, you know, communism and all those isms, um, high criticism and all those things. But but it, it didn't just stop there. These ideas went along and built schools. These ideas went along and built businesses. These ideas manifested themselves in physical entities. So how can yeah. you prepare with something that's called theoretical when the devil has theory and also has buildings and you know physical physical structures to contract the truth? Amen. I you know, brethren, um, people don't know how powerful a tool a school is. A school can shape your ideology. You know, a school can literally shape your belief system. You know, and, and as Seventh-day Adventists, most of us really don't believe that, but it is true. A school can literally shape your belief system. When, 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 when Charles Chinicky was represented by Abraham Lincoln, and Abraham Lincoln won that case, and, and, and eventually they shot Abraham Lincoln in his head, you know, because he became an enemy of Rome. So the Jesuit had arranged for John Wilkes Booth to shoot Abraham Lincoln in his head. There was a hostility to the Roman Catholic Church in that period of time. There was a straight out hostility. There was somewhat a hostility when the Protestant originally came over. But after the, the assassination of Abraham Lincoln, the, 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 there was just this outright distrust for Jesuits and Catholicism. And the churches, to establish churches, new Catholic churches in the United States, it was very difficult for the Catholic Church to, 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 to enter into the glorious land and to, to set up her, her tabernacles, you know? And, and brethren, do you know how Catholicism eventually infiltrated the United States to the point where now Catholic, Catholicism is a dominant power in the United States? The Catholic Church resorted to using schools. The Catholic Church resorted to the school system. Catholicism conquered America via schools. So if we don't understand the value of schools and believe that school is just something like, Rome doesn't see it as something like. Rome says that if we get your children from zero to five, we, you have a Catholic for life, even if they don't go to the Catholic Church. Rome says if you if you give us your children from zero to five, man, these children are indoctrinated into Catholicism. And the, the, the religion that they will express is that of Catholicism. Whether or not they acknowledge it as Catholicism, that is what they that they will that, that, that is what they will resort to. And brethren, I'm seeing that the fruitage of that. I'm seeing the fruitage of that. You know? Because many of the things that we, we imbibe and we, we carry out in our daily lives. Many of it is Catholic in, in nature. You know, and many of us have gone to Catholic basic schools and prep schools and, 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 and high schools. And, and, and that is why a lot of our children are dropping out once they reach an age where they can pay rent for themselves. Most of them leave the church because they have been indoctrinated outside of Adventism. And it is great to a great degree via schools. So we don't see the importance of our schools. But Satan sees the importance of his schools because he knows that once he indoctrinates children, he can get a Satanist for life. They, they, they just don't burn black candles and wear black clothes, but they, they belong to his army. Whether or not they even know it or acknowledge it. 
the servants of God are sealing their forehead before the time of trouble. Not in the time of trouble. It is before. We have to have that clarified. The servants of God are sealed in their forehead before the time of trouble. <clears throat> because many people believe that it is in the time of trouble we are going to be sealed. And some people are just waiting to settle into the truth during that time. But we are sealed before. It says here, just before we entered it, it brackets the time of trouble, we all received the seal of the living God. Then I saw four angels cease to hold the four winds, and I saw famine, my word, pestilence and sword. Nation rose against nation, and the whole world was in confusion. And you see why it is so serious for us not to live in the wrong places? Because you have pestilence. When the winds are loose, you have famine, pestilence, sword, wars with nations, and the whole world being in confusion. It says here, I saw the angels... Mm -hmm. Alright, so friends, we are going to partner together with something. It is yeah. really distracting when, when the, 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 the sound is playing in the background. So let's just monitor our mics, please. It really creates a lot of confusion. Please. Alright, so we'll move on. I saw, I saw angels hurrying to and fro in heaven. An angel with a writer's incarnate by his side returned from earth and reported to Jesus that his work was done, and the saints were numbered and sealed. Then I saw Jesus, who had been ministering before the ark containing the Ten Commandments, threw down the censer. He raised his hands and with a loud voice said, It is done. And when that censer is thrown down, when the censer is thrown down, it speaks to um, probation, closing at that point. Now, something I want to point out again, just want to drive it home. God's last day, people will not be idlers. They won't just be sitting in, in religious bliss, just waiting on the mark of the beast. That is not our work. That is not what God is calling us to. And this fallacy is being taught by many ministries, many ministers, that we really should not be any, doing anything productive. Because we are in the last days. And that is total nonsense. It is total nonsense. It is grossly nonsensical. And it must be rescinded. People should stop teaching people to become non-progressive elements. Telling people to leave school and to leave their vocation because it is the last days. God it's never called anybody to do that. And we must be careful of people who teach us things. I see a hand school and I'm going to... To, to allow you the opportunity. I see your hand. So God's last year people will not be idlers. Christ declared that when he comes, some of his waiting people will be engaged in business transactions. Some will be sowing in the field. Others reaping and gathering in the harvest. And others grinding at the mill. Look at the clear statement from a prophet. It is not God's will that his elect shall abandon life's duties and responsibilities and give themselves up to idle contemplation living in a religious dream manuscript 26 1901 it is not god's will so we have to ensure that we are in god's will enough because when we are not in god's will we are in satan's will occupy till i come christ says occupy till i come luke 1913 it may be a few years until our life's history shall close. But we must occupy till then. The Review and Era, April 21, 1896. Christ would have everyone educate himself to calmly contemplate his second appearing. All are to search the word of God daily, but not neglect present duties. Letter 28, 1897. So anybody who comes telling you to run out of your job and so on, it is not somebody called by God. We have, to, we have to be careful. You know, we should lay broad plans and be and be careful. Let's be careful, brethren. Because you know, sometimes when we see something look like the time is coming close and so on, we, we start to get caught up in time excitement and then we just abandon everything. We, we are to be careful of that. Let no man deceive you. God's last year, people will be industrious. The prophet says, some may say, 
if the Lord is coming soon, what need is there to establish schools, sanitariums, food factories? What need is there for our young people to learn trades? Last day events, page 79, paragraph 4. I have heard this so many times from so-called present truth leaders talking about in the last days and it's the Sunday law about to pass. So it is too late. God never gave any of these people a clock and gave them instructions that it is too late. But they have taken it upon themselves to, to bring a false report, to be moved by a spirit from beneath and not from the one above. Because look at what the spirit from above is saying to his prophet. Some may say, if, it, if the Lord is coming soon, what need is there to establish schools, sanitariums, and food factories? What need is there for our young people to learn trades? Look at the answer. It is the Lord's design that we shall constantly improve the talents he has given us. We cannot do this unless we use them. The prospect of Christ's soon coming should not lead us to idleness. Instead, it should lead us to do all we possibly can to bless and benefit humanity. But that is where we are falling short, you know. As a people, we do not care about blessing humanity. What we care about is protecting our own hide. That is what we care about, and that is why our ideology is the way it is. That is why we, we, we are running to Sunday emergency mode. In the pandemic, we look for a place to rush and duck our heads. And we are not thinking about how we could have blessed humanity with the knowledge God gave us in terms of medical missionary work. Because we are self-preservers. We, we don't care about others as much as a people. Yeah, as a people, we are plagued with that spirit. And, and God, God wants us to overcome it. God wants us to overcome it, Frederick. We have to, we have to overcome that thing. You know, we have to overcome it as a people. And, and God doesn't want us to, to be in idle expectation, just waiting on, a, on the mark of the beast. We should, we should be improving ourselves and we should be improving the talents that God has given us. You know, God never called us to be idlers and to waste our time and so on. You know, and, and then to, to put ourselves into abject poverty. You know, that is another foolish notion that many people have, have, have imbibed that God wants his people to, to live in abject poverty. When, when, when you know, God, God doesn't have a counsel from his word saying that, you know, we have imbibed a lot of fallacy. A great work must be done all through the world and let no one conclude that because the end is near. Look at what the prophet says. A great work must be done all through the world. And let no one conclude that because the end is near, there is no need of special effort to build up the various institutions as the cause shall demand. When the Lord shall bid us make no further effort to build meeting houses and establish schools, sanitariums, and publishing institutions, it will be time for us to fold our hands and let the Lord close up the work. But now is our opportunity to show our zeal for God and our love for humanity. And I say amen because I agree with the prophet 1,000% here. You know, there is nothing in us that we do not still hold. Reference to our published works will show our belief that the living righteous will receive the seal of God prior to the close of probation. Also that these will enjoy special honors in the kingdom of God. So the, the, the 144,000 are sealed before probation closes. Brother school, uh, uh, you, you had your hand up and then you disappeared. So I see you're about now. So Brother Skula and then Brother Cashway and Legister. Brother Skula. Yes, um, Rosie, I'm, I'm, very, I'm very appreciative of the views that you have shared. Um, but as I listened to it, you know, it, it, I was overwhelmed with the, with the fact that we can just because of that excitement and not quietly meditating on certain things and the, the enthusiastic of even our bridging them, take up wrong, wrong principles and run with it. You understand? Because look at it, look at the fact. All of these statements, you didn't dream them up, but they're right there. Why would you <laughs> remember that during the time? You understand? Because a lot of bridging them, a lot of people left their jobs. Not a, I mean, you, you, you had to stand up strong um, when person are saying to you, listen, you know, things done, you know, you know, 
you know, need to continue with your, your job. You, know, you need to, to leave everything and go set up, set up a little um, house in our country. And, and, this is, and, and I'm not hitting out against country living because it is one, this is the other step that we have to take because it's clearly seen that God wants us as his people to live in a place that we're not so dependent on the system. So, um, but the thought that we should, we should leave our jobs, even though the scripture never said that, he said that they will be, they, they, that the system will tell you, you cannot buy and sell. There is no way that he says that God's people chose not to buy or sell or them stop um, working or, or give up their, 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 their means of making a living. It's the system that forced them into that. But, but we went ahead, and I must say we, because when any one of us do it, it's we. We went ahead and we, we instituted the time of trouble. And that we're doing, we instituted the time of trouble. We, Mercy. we, we made it doctrinal that, yeah, yeah, you know, this is it, the, 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 what God has said, that we should give up, we should stop buying and selling when God never did tell us anything like that. We must stop mm. working when we can't find anything that says that. You understand? We must must trust, learn to trust God by not doing anything to make a living. We must just become monks. You understand? Mm. And 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 basically, I say that that you know we must even even as we speak about it, was it must be because it can happen. It can happen. It did happen. People are studying a mill choose spirit of prophecy miss some simple things that could have helped. You understand? If we had looked back at it and said, yeah, what? The Bible never said that. It never said that. And so I'm I'm thankful that you're bringing out these points and, and, and give it to me. I, I know, my brother, as you look at the principles of the sanctuary, you know, sometimes it's like, as a people, we cherry pick, or we, 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 we treat the word of God as a buffet. Because if I ask a question, the Day of Atonement has a fast attached to it. What is the fast? What is the fast? How, how is the fast applied in our antitypical Day of Atonement? Can anybody provide that answer? Most fast of us would the answer. Hmm. The fast is? Fast from sinning. Fast from sinning, amen. What are, what are the physical way that we apply that fast? Good to have fixed your own soul. Yeah, but but health reform. Thank you, sister. Thank you, sister Mays. Health reform. But do you know that there were other principles attached to the Day of Atonement? Hmm? The Day of Atonement was a Sabbath. Am I correct or incorrect? Yeah, that is true. Correct. All right. Do you know that within all of the sacred Sabbaths, there was a command that you should do no servile work. True, true, is, true. Is, is that false doctrine? No, man, that is true. Does the Day of Atonement have the same principle attached to it? Yes, it does. Or am I lying? All right, so if, if, if elder form and abstaining from sin is the application of the fast, fine, that is in the antithetical application. How do we apply doing no servile work? Working as the Lord asks us to do all the industries and... All right, brother. All right, brother. Is, 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 is brother here and speaking fallacy, Bertrand? Mm -hmm. But but was it? In, in that, it, the, 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 it's the industries also that the Lord will, will, will have us set up. Yes, true. But every work, I mean, that we do, as long every as work? we do it. Every work. Every work. Every work. Yes, man, every work. All right. Um, why why yes. am I saying that? Because Christ never, the industry that Christ worked in for nearly 30 years was that of carpentry. Yeah. That is industry. But who did he so, work for? Who did Christ work no, for? He was, he, he was, he was self-employed. No, but he even as a carpenter, who did Christ work for as a carpenter? He, he, he worked in his own shop. No, but, but 
when we are Christians, do, does anything we have belong to us? No. You know that the learning of trades was something prescribed by God. So he was carrying out the will of God, you know. Mm -hmm. So so what is the antitypical? Uh, does a priest do servile work? No, not really. Did the, did the priest work on the day of atonement? Yes. Think about it. Did the priest work on the day of atonement? Yes. 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 yes he did. He did. But was he doing servile work on the day of atonement? No. 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 So what is, Holy work. So what, so what is so 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 working for God is is doing no servile work. So what I'm just putting out to think about, you know. What is God calling us to in the antitypical day of atonement? I know it is a very challenging question, but let us honestly contemplate the question over the course of the next week. Let us honestly mm -hmm. contemplate what God is calling us to because we can, act, we can easily digest the other aspects of the day of atonement. You know? okay. oh, the true fast is ultra farm. I will digest that so fast. But the no servile work part, let's skip across it. But is God saying that we can cherry pick and use his word as a buffet. So, why all the, right. Why that? Why that? Keep the secret Sabbath, or we are not enough. I do not think that we should even. Um, cons but, but, but honestly, um, look at it. So basically, what you're saying that what I am saying, <laughs> my brother. Mm -hmm. Well, basically, you're presenting though know, as <laughs> as the word of God, you know, because basically you're asking us to contemplate what. The possible meaning of no survival work is, and it could be, right? Um, as you say, contemplation is that what God is calling us to 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 be um, in these last days are in to be as I said earlier to be independent of the system that 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 are around us and to be self-employed. <laughs> Am I am I am am I reading this wrong? Because basically, Don't tell me, brother. No, but, but I I do believe that you know that in this in 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 work, whatever work is, wherever you do work, that you do you as as the scripture says, you must not do it unto to men, but you do it unto God. So wherever right. you are found in employment, right, you can do that unto the Lord. Uh, All right. I, do, I do accept, I do accept though, that God is calling us to, to establish our own industry. But I don't, I don't, I don't know if, 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 if I can I, say why, I'm, because you are not working in an industry that is called, that God is calling. All right. Do you, do you, do you think, do you think, do you think that the Seventh-day Adventist church and its pioneers came mm -hmm. as a result of the reality connected to the sanctuary principle of the tenth day of the seventh month, the day of atonement. Yes, I do believe that. All right. Can you name one Adventist pioneer that worked for the secular government? Just name one. I'm waiting. Just name one Adventist pioneer. No, I, I don't even want that. two names. I just want one name. Once their understanding of the 10th day of the 7th month came, the day of atonement, name one Adventist pioneer that just continued their lives working for the secular government of the United States of America. Just name one of them. Just one. I don't even need two names. Just name one. But, but brother, what's all right? The, the, we, we, you don't make no sense to wait for the answer because it can't come. But, um, so, but I agree. I agree 100% with what you're saying. This is definitely what the, the, the combination of well, the word of God, the spirit of prophecy, it, 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 it I talk about at this point in time. We must put everything in a God's work. And that don't just mean for us go out and go preach and um do medical missionary. Those things are fully important. But there are many persons, it says people will be doing business transaction. God's people will be doing business transaction. Everything we're doing, as much as we can get to, I know that 
we might not all be in that place right now to leave the job immediately or anything of that sort. Amen. We must, Amen. We must, we must think about it and pray to God and ask God when is the right time and move towards it in faith. <laughs> and then at a certain point, God will allow us to be able to leave off of the survey work and move Amen. towards you know, whether it be establishing school or working with a school or establishing a sanitarium or working in the sanitarium. Our farm. Our farm, especially our farm. I believe everybody's supposed to have some level of a farm because you need to be self um, subsistent or, or pin, uh, not, not pintry, sorry, printry or, so, or, or food um, factory. So, there are so many different things to God's work is so broad and all these things it will help lead people to god like never amen. before amen. never before amen. you think you think you see anything else think, you think you see anything with um kellogg and all those invention he make and breakfast here in make wait until god poured him spirit because people are obedient to him in this day and you see what we will invent, invent by god's grace and amen. see how much people flock towards god he will draw nigh on him because we will be obedient. So that is it. That is Amen. it. You said it, you said it perfectly, brother here. Because I'm not saying people should make a mad dash from their place of employment. What I'm also saying though is that we should never get comfortable in these positions because God is calling us to a higher reality. God is always doing that. You know. And as it changed me, oh God, saying that they don't understand the relationship. All right. So servile work was any ordinary duty in Israel that was not connected to the work of God. But, but that was the literal type. That was how it was applied because the Day of Atonement was a Sabbath. Now, in the antitypical Day of Atonement, it cannot be applied that we should never work until Jesus comes back. But the priest was somebody who worked, but the priest never did servile work. Even on the day of atonement, the priest is the one who interceded. The priest is the one who went from holy to most holy place. But the priest was not doing servile work, even though he worked, because the priest was working for God. He was working for God. So the anti-typical application of it is that God is actually calling his people to come work for him. That is, that is the anti-typical application of it. You know? God is calling his people to work for him. In the chat system, he has said something which was true. James White actually worked like as a railroad um, worker. He also used to cut down wheat and so on and do other odd jobs. But James White never remained working that way. That is a historic fact. James White became an editor and a writer for the Review and Herald wrote many studies on periodicals and books. And the remainder of his life, his employment was working for the Seventh-day Adventist movement. James White lived out the remainder of his life working for God. Ellen White had the trade of a hat maker. And as she matured and got older, her work was working for God. Joseph Bates used to be a steamboat captain. But Joseph Bates eventually went to work for God. The pioneers all worked for God. And I'm saying, is it something that they are fulfilling an anti-type? Because there must be an application in the anti-type for the type. And we know that there is a fast in the type. And we can easily apply what that type, that, 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 that fast is in the anti-type. But how do we apply no servile work? Because as long as you're working for God, you are not doing servile work. And that is the purpose for the institutions, as Brother Brian so, so well ably said. The purpose of the institutions is for us to provide work for ourselves. Because we are being called out of their government into another government. And, and that is something we are not understanding as God's people. The call out of Babylon is not just about call out of religious ideologies. It is a call out of their system. It is a call from supporting their system. It is a call from supporting their tyrannical system that is designed to trod you down underfoot and keep you working and you can't make two ends meet. We're just working to pay their bills and the cable fee and the internet fee and the this and the that. 
you are you are you are trapped in in, in Pharaoh's workhouse and you can't find yourself getting out of it. God is saying that come and work for me. Come and come and be independent of them. Come and work for me. You answer to me and your time is based on my schedule. When you work for God through your own institution that God helps you to raise up. When the Sabbath comes, you can leave at one o'clock. But when you are working for their system, their system doesn't recognize that. Their system tells you you have to wait till four o'clock, four thirty, or five o'clock. When when you are at the edges of the Sabbath, you are just leaving work. So God is calling His people outside of that. But we are not as fast to see the application right there because of unbelief. But God is calling us out of that kind of tyranny. Where people are keeping you in a building until the edge of Sabbath. That sounds like God's perfect plan for your life. Where somebody tells you in, in, in December and November that my, my work hours are from 9 to 5. And you are there working 5 o'clock and you're sitting there because you have to honor their time. And you might put down your pen and so on, but you're still trapped in their building until 5 o'clock. When a prophet says that we should guard sit closely to the edges of the Sabbath. Is that God's idea? Let us be honest with ourselves. Let us be honest with ourselves, brethren. You know, because God is always carrying us up, up, us up. You know, that is what he was doing in the wilderness, you know. At each step, he was, he was gradually showing them, you will have to shed off that Egyptian thinking. At each step, they felt uncomfortable the more God was saying, come and depend on me. It's the same test coming to us, you know. 1 Corinthians 10 tells us that they are in samples to us. And we do, we do just like them in unbelief. We murmur against the truth. We murmur against it. But God is doing the same thing. God is saying, are you going to trust me that I can take care of you? Or are you going to trust Pharaoh with his garlic and leeks and all his onions and all his flesh pots and believe that that is sustenance? And, and, and would we that we, we would have died in this wilderness because Egypt was so grand and you were a slave there? You were a slave there. You were under a tyrant as Sister Renee is looking at every Sabbath morning. That is tyranny, you know. Because we can't really worship God as God would re require. The prophet of the Lord says we should guard sacredly the edges of the Sabbath. When you are working in a nine-to-five arrangement for a secular entity, are you really guarding carefully the edges of the Sabbath? Let us be honest with ourselves, brethren. Let us be honest with ourselves. Let us be honest with ourselves. I, I just leave that there for, for personal study. But if there is an application to the fast, in my mind, there is an application to the do no servile work. Because tight meets anti tight you know? So the, the anti tight might be uncomfortable, but are we going to trust God, brethren? Are we going to trust God? Tony, did you get to speak or are your hands still up? Antonio? Okay. Yeah, you hear me now? Yes, I hear you, brother. Yeah, man, um, you are, we, were, we were talking about um, when Christ came on the scene, right? Uh, and he only had three and a half years left uh, until the, the son in law in his, in his, in his time in Rome had to come and this this is the Holy Land. Uh, Christ didn't say, well, so, so in law is 3.5 years. Uh, you know what? Uh, let, let me not work, let me not do it. Let, let me just, you know, and go meditate like a monk and just uh, enjoy the rest of the three and a half years until we won't destroy Jerusalem. You know, Christ did the utmost work. Matter of fact, Christ became Christ did the utmost work that is possible. I mean, Christ became so consistent. Christ became the best worker that there is. Anything that could work, he worked it to his best of ability. And notice yeah. now. You no, know, his son-in-law was coming his, his day. He, he, he wasn't saying about how much less work he could do. I'm saying that if if type is any type, right, eh, and we're supposed to refer the character of Christ, eh, before his son-in-law come, should, should we be doing less work? Should we think about, well, son-in-law is coming. No school, no <laughs> science, you know. Let me go high away in the country and set to a prize. And look at the people, these unbeautiful people. I should be saying, Lord, his son-in-law is near. How can I best present you? How can I have the best institution education to be for these people? How can I give them the best health so that when the time comes, they are dipping upon pharmaceutical drugs or medication to stand? How can I give them the best parenting so you know if, if the parenting are taken away or killed when Christ the kids 
know the Bible for himself, know, know, know the different topic for himself. Well, how can I give the person the best experience to stand? So even if I perish, or even if I'm, I'm not around to in the law, you know, and the institutions that we have left behind, we have been able, able to prepare others. You know, that's how Christ was thinking. And I don't see the answer. That's how, that, that, that's how we should be thinking at the end of time. You know, not about, oh, you know, I'll be in my house. Oh, what's that? Where's your house? In the house, you have to lose and all that nonsense. We're still saying, yes, having our own house is, is better. But you know what's even better? Helping the brother, helping us to get, get yourself ready. I think that's what yeah. that is a character of Job in the last days. Job was just, you know, you know, I'm rich, you know, I'm perfect. Eh? La la la. It's all about me and my family. Job says, yes, I'm rich, I'm perfect. But how oh, no can I translate and help us get to the same standard perfectly like that I know at? Eh? And that should be the thought eh? as you enter into the time of trouble or uh, as the son in law approaches us. Eh? Amen. Amen. Thank you for that, brother Tony. All right, so we'll proceed. So the son in law closes human probation. It is in a crisis that character is revealed. When the earnest voice proclaimed at midnight, Behold the bridegroom, come in, go ye out to meet him. And the sleeping virgins were aroused from their slumbers. It was seen who had made preparation for the event. Both parties were taken unawares, but one was prepared for the emergency and the other was found without preparation. So now, a sudden and unlooked for calamity something that brings the soul face to face with death, will show whether there is any real faith in the promises of God. It will show whether the soul is sustained by grace. The great final test comes at the close of human probation, when it will be too late for the soul's need to be supplied. Christ's Object Lessons 4.12 Probation closes when we least expect it. When probation ends, it will come suddenly, unexpectedly, at a time when we are least expecting it. But we can have a clean record in heaven today and know that God accepts us. Seven Bible Commentary 989. When we work, when the work of the investigative judgment closes, the destiny of all will have been decided for life or death. Probation is ended a short time before the appearing of the Lord in the clouds. So when probation closes, Jesus comes shortly after that. Praise God. Before the flood, after Noah entered the ark, God shut him in and shut the ungodly out. But for seven days, the people, knowing not that their doom was fixed, continued their careless, pleasure-loving life and mocked the warnings of impending judgment. So, says the Savior, shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. Matthew 24, 39. Silently, unnoticed as the thief, the midnight thief, will come the decisive hour which marks the fixing of every man's destiny, the final withdrawal of mercy, mercies offered to guilty men. While the man of business is absorbed in the pursuit of gain, while the pleasure lover is seeking indulgence, while the daughter of fashion is arranging her adornments, it may be in that hour the judge of all earth will pronounce the sentence, thou art weighed in the balances and found wanting of mercy. So, Probation will come in a, in a silent way. A silent way. The image of the beast formed before probation closes. The Lord has shown me clearly that the image of the beast will be formed before probation closes. For it is the great test for the people of God by which their eternal destiny will be decided. So the image of the beast forms before probation closes. This is the test the people of God must have before they are sealed. So before the people of God are sealed, there will be the union of church and state, the image of the beast. So that happens just before the sealing. So when, when, when we see the constitution rescinded and the image of the beast is formed in the United States, you know that God's people are in that sealing process. The seal is, is now applying. I believe that some are being sealed right now, but when that, that time comes, that is the making of, of the actual 144,000. What is meant by giving life to the image of the beast? Testimonies, volume 5, page 712 says, When our nations shall so adjure, 
the principles of its government as to enact a Sunday law, Protestantism will in this act join hands with, with popery. It will be nothing else than giving life to the tyranny, which has long eagerly watching its opportunity to spring again into active despotism. So it is through the Sunday law. Apostasy leads the Sunday churches to create the image of the beast. So it's apostasy that leads them to create the image of the beast. Look at what the prophet says in Great Controversy, page 443. It was apostasy that led the early church to seek the aid of the civil government. And this prepared the way for the development of the papacy. Said Paul, there shall come a falling away and that man of sin shall be revealed. Second Thessalonians 2 verse 3. So apostasy in the church will prepare the way for the image of the beast. So the way the, the papacy came about is was because the church was an apostate power. So it turned to politics and, and, and the civil government to enact her, 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 her wishes. And every time you see that, that move, this political move on the part of the church, it is because the church is in apostasy. It is weakened through apostasy. And now it depends on the state to help it. I see the under brother school and Uncle Denver Sapleton. Um, your hands. Okay. Um, Elder, the, the question begs to be asked, why, why is the image of the beast such a problem? Or as, as, it, as the servant of the Lord says, that it will be, this will be the test for God's people. Why is this so? Why is it this, this a test for God's people? Because right now God's people is being tested as to whether they will recognize this in their daily lives. Because it is, it is going to be something that seems very good, you know. And many, many of the children of God are, are being duped by it right now. Many of the children of God see the necessity of, of, of carrying out Christian agenda via the government. The civil government should enforce Christian agenda. Mm -hmm. and, and it's not just evangelicals that are running with that. I've, I've had conversations, real ongoing conversations with Seventh-day Adventists that believe in, 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 in what the Republican Party stands for and that they should be card-carrying Republicans. And I'm saying that is still dangerous. Yeah, the Democrats are endorsing homosexuality, which is repugnant, and all manner of evil, and abortion, and all those things. And I agree that Life is sacred. I agree that children should be preserved from this evil tyranny of abortion. I believe in all of these conservative positions. But I just don't believe that the church should be leaning on the state like that to enact her decrees. I believe our duty is to bring the gospel to people. And the gospel has efficacious power to transform these lives. And the gospel can transform the life of the homosexual. The gospel can transform the life of the young miss who would otherwise abort a child. The gospel has transformative power to transform the life of the lesbian and, 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 and the, 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 the trans, transgender person. The power of the gospel can transform lives. So I believe the church's role is to rely on the power of God via the gospel. Mm -hmm. But many Seventh-day Adventists believe that you know, these conservative parties like the, the, the Republicans and so on are the solution to the church. And, 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 and we, they must rally behind them because they will pass church laws upon people. You know, they will legislate mm -hmm. morality. And that is problematic. So that is a test for God's people. Because mm -hmm. we must render unto Caesar that only which, respect, which, 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 which um, pertains to Caesar. But render to God the things that belong to God. And morality mm -hmm. is a matter of God. Morality belongs to God alone. The issues um, of morality uh, pertains to God alone. But the greatest to God's people is, will you want to enforce morality on other people? And it is not the place of the Christian church to enforce mor morality on people via the civil government. That is not our role. Mm -hmm. Not even God does that you know. Not even God does that, you know. God was sovereign right to tell people and force them what to do. 
God can, can, God can put pressure on us to keep his ten commandments. And God doesn't do that. So what will give the church the right to do what God does not do? Okay. You it know, is contrary um, to his character to force. I, I, agree with with you. I agree with you, Elder. You know, I remember the, you remember the first test where Saul got? Yeah. Saul was to wait on the prophet, wait on Samuel. But instead of waiting on Samuel, he did something that he should not have done. He approached the altar and made an offering to the Lord. And for that reason, that was the first test that he failed, you know, because he, he crossed the boundary. Mm. God had drawn a line between church and state from back, even back then. Praise the God. Kings were different. The kings were in charge of um, civil power. But yes. Levites, Levites were, were in charge of of the the, 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 the the service of altar God. of the Lord. Amen. Yes. And he should not have approached the altar because it was not his place. And Saul crossed that boundary. And then when he was, then the second test that he got was that he was given a direct instruction by the Lord. But did he follow the direct instruction? No. He when he was armed, um, reproved by the prophet again. Saul so shows our attitude because basically many times when the prophets speak, we have a holy power argument. Holy power argument. Why we think this must happen and that must happen. And he argued himself out of his kingdom, out of a mm. kingdom and a relationship with God. Oh, and I yeah, believe that, 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 that is the same, the same road we are beat out down. First, it, it, it happened during COVID and I must bring it up because it did. Where many many of our members sided with the secular powers and made decisions that affected lives. We, we when I beat our virgin, them were done with that because basically are we are we you know again it's not them it's us. You understand? But it shows us where we can be and where we what what the dangers are. We must see the lines being drawn. You, we can go so far, far and no further. And in a time of extreme, people make extreme decisions. And, mm -hmm. and sometimes our decisions are very wrong because the principle okay. that is behind it is wrong. And they go, sometimes those principles go directly against God's government. And that is, what, that, this is what this is pointed to. What is going to happen is going to look good. It's going to be yes. to save lives. It's going, brethren, to save lives. Don't you want to save lives? Amen. Yes, and it's going to sound good. And everybody going to find the flame, you know, as it was. And you are selfish and all of that. But it is going to be deadly wrong. You understand? We cannot force other persons to be religious and righteous. People have to make up their own mind to do that. You understand? We must. We can't even change our own our hearts. We must just change other people. And the laws of the land are going to do it either. So we have to understand that so that is what the that's why the image of the beast is going to be a problem to Adventists because it's going to we are going to either stand in nice seat as Saul or we are um or we're going to be like David who listened to the voice of God and followed him as David yeah. as as God said David is a man of my own heart will we be people of after God's own heart or are we going to try to save our own lives by following Amen. what government says or what other Amen. persons are saying. Thank you for that, Brother Spooler. Um, Brother Sappleton and then Sister Tina. Brother Sappleton. Yes, um, yes sir. Good night. Good night, um, Brother. Uh, I have a question and it's back to probation. Um, I've been hearing a statement from from church people and uh, uh, and I I don't believe it's correct but um they say that you can be here now and your probation close um 
but I can understand in the sense that your probation can close if you rejected the Holy Spirit. You you um, blaspheme against the Holy Spirit. You you've died, um, and that and at and at that point when Jesus is soon to come. So when they say you can be here now, your probation closed, and I'm like, how do we know that? The, 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 probate, the, the, the judgment has moved from the righteous dead to the righteous living. And well, I've never read it before, but I'm not sure if it is correct. Well, that is something that um, Sister White says that no one will know when that transition occurs. Certain things like the, the image of the beast being formed, that will that will stand as a clue that you are we are transitioning into that time you know because if 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 the people of god are being sealed during the context of the image of the beast being formed then whoever is not sealed their probation has closed in 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 a bad state so so we know that if the people of god are being sealed when the image of the beast is formed then we know that, of course, if the living are being sealed, 144,000, that is the judgment of the living. That actual process of sealing the 144,000 is the judgment of the living. So there is an event that gives us a time so we can recognize that a hey, sealing is taking place. But it is our personal walk with the Lord that determines if the seal is falling on our heads. And I prefer... The definition that Sister White gives about the seal, that it is a settling into the truth intellectually and spiritually so that we cannot be moved. So as God provides us with more light and knowledge, we agree with God. Because God asks a question, can two walk together lest they be agreed? And if I agree with God, I, sure, I am sure I'm walking with him. And there was a man who walked with God and was not, for God took him. And the prophet of the Lord says that Enoch is a symbol of those who will be translated without seeing death. So the, the, the relationship that the 144,000 will have with God will be just like the relationship Enoch had with, Enoch had with God. He, they will be walking in agreement with God and God will be sealing them. So, so in that context, Brother Sapotan, an event is given when we have a an idea as to the fact that sealing would be taking place. But it will be such a pressuring time. I don't know if anybody will be focusing so much on whether I am in this tribe or that tribe. Or the focus will be, God have mercy upon my soul because this crisis is upon the earth. And, you know, this is this is a clear sign that you are coming. So, so the, 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 the image of the beast being formed, is the same period of time that the 144,000 is being sealed. So in my understanding, the judgment of the dead, sorry, the judgment of the living will be around that time. Okay, no, uh, thank you. Yes, yes, my brother, God bless. Sister Tina and then brother Cashway. Happy Sabbath, everyone. I was already. Happy Sabbath. Night, night, I just know. I just wanted to um to just make a statement because based on what is being said and you know what you're showing us from the spirit of prophecy, I'm believing that this um this work for the Lord in the last days is a problem for some of us, maybe because of what it is that we think we're giving up. Because if we're in a particular job, no, and this is not the job that or it is servile work then and that's not the work that God wants us to do many times in taking up the work of the Lord we might be asked to be in humbler in a humbler setting then Amen. um something where it may not be as flashy as you as we're used to and so I believe that our prayer right now should be to ask the Lord to just help us to recognize that the materialistic the material things of the world is really not important wherever he wants us to be help us to have a mindset that we will be there 
and that we will be present and that we will do the work that he has asked us to do. The, the, one of the things also that I, I believe, um, especially for persons who insist that through legislation, we can do certain things as it relates to the work of God. We, we need to reach a point now where we really test God. God asks us to test him. God asks us to prove him. And if he says that we are to go out there through these avenues and, uh, you know, s- spread the gospel to all the world, that's the time we're going to see some work. We're going to see some manifestation of God that we will never see if we don't surrender ourselves to do the work that he has asked us to do. Amen. Right? So, you know, I think that we're at a point where we need to humbly come before the Lord, strip self, and ask him to allow for us to have the very mind of Jesus Christ, to totally surrender all to God, and to allow him to change up our lives, basically change up our norms to his norm, and to live according to his will. I'm suspecting that living like Enoch wasn't any, it doesn't look like anything that's happening now. Being that connected that Jesus, that God said, you know what, you're not even going to die. You're going to come up with me right now. That sort of connection with God, I'm thinking, takes a daily surrender of self, a daily connection, a, a, a a true love connection with yes. God. And I think that's what we need to be working on so that we can be used in, in these last days. Praise God. Praise God. Thank you for that, Sister Tina. Praise God. And again, I must underscore, brethren, what I am not saying is that persons should just fly up immediately if you are working at um mutual life or no, that doesn't exist anymore. If you're working at Sajic War, you're working at CIBC Bank, you're working at the Ministry of Justice, you're working at the Ministry of Education, Ministry of Finance, you're working for a public school. But Brother Wazari is not saying you should flippantly just jump up and leave your job. But what I am also saying is that we ought to be considering what God is saying in the Day of Atonement. Because we can easily find relevance for the fast. But of necessity, there must be an application to the do no servile work. There must be an application. So, um, so eventually we are going to be working for God. I'm, so I'm, while I'm it is not an right. instant thing, eventually God is calling us to eventually shed this society and come into his society. And, so, and so. you know, I just want to say that the, the work is is actually, I hear a brother said the work is vast that is needed amongst God's people. And even now for me and the whole, I have now the two young boys and I'm thinking about their education and what is it that needs to be done. And I'm very much aware of what you stated earlier about the Catholic schools and stuff and looking into, you know, maybe homeschooling them and so on. And I'm saying, if there was some sort of um, community of Seventh-day Adventist young ladies who may have, you know, teaching stuff, they can come together and they build up the farmer school with Amen. Seventh-day Adventist principles and stuff. And I, I mean, I, I would then have an option to send my kids to something like that, as opposed Amen. to sending them to the traditional schools. So we need to start really thinking about the skills and the talents that God has given us and to use it for the, to, to, to use it in a way that we are spreading the gospel to all the world, you know? Amen. So, you know, it's just this week I'm saying if there was, if, if, if I had access to a young lady in the church who has certain teaching, basic teaching thing, I would now hire her to just say, all right, look after my kids and do it because of the principles that I know that she should have. As a, cause 
I mean, the daycare thing for me is overwhelming. The, the going to school otherwise from where they're supposed to go is overwhelming because Seventh day Adventist schools are not everywhere and they're not at all stages of children's life. So there's a lack in. There is a lack wow. and there is a need within the community of Seventh day Adventists that needs to be filled. And this is where, you know, we need to start looking, not outside, but within to see how Amen. best the Lord can use us to, to, to fill these niche because our kids now have to be educated in the direction of what is going to happen to them in the last days. Praise God, and the Sister only thing to learn that is within our church. They're not going to learn Praise that at the school. You understand Praise me? So we have to see how best we can create these avenues so that some of the Adventist parents, some of the Adventist families can function as well as um, to be equipped to go out there in the cities to say, all right, the Lord is coming. You need to do what you need to do. Or we serve people in a way that they'll say, you know, what is it that you do? I'm a Seventh-day Adventist. What is this about? And that is where we need to be. And that's where God wants us to be. Praise God. Praise God, Sister Tina. I you know, funny enough, statistically, the job that is highest, the, 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 the evocation that is highly represented among us as a people. I believe the highest representation of this vocation is among the teachers. You have more Seventh-day Adventist teachers in Jamaica than any other profession across the board. You have many Seventh-day Adventist teachers. You know, so, uh, you know, it is a fiat issue, you know. It's a fiat issue because, you know, <laughs> when somebody has already gone through the teething pains of creating their own school, when Campion has created their own school and Meadowbrook and Merle Grove and Calabar and Holy Childhood, these people have gone through the teething pains and created their own school and exercised their own faith and exercised it in the end of creating their own schools. And they, they, they create a nice smooth system. So the money come in and you can apportion what will be for the salary and then they get government subsidy and all of these things. So you are sure of a paycheck, you know? <laughs> you are sure of the paycheck. All you have to do is apply for a job. You have to just apply and ensure that you do your master's degree and if you want to stay in the school system or you want to become a principal eventually and then you can matriculate and then you can access some more money so you probably can drive a better car and access some other benefits and so on. It is It does not require much faith. But to create a school and trust that God is going to love you enough to pay you on a monthly basis and take care of all your needs, that requires faith. And the big fundamental Jesus, question Jesus asks is when the Son of Man comes back in his glory, shall he find faith? It is so easy to modify the life and, and, and change your closet and change your clothes and change your dinner and your, and, your, and your supper and you can change your breakfast, but it is not easy to live by faith. That is why Jesus asked that question and, and the issue of, of creating these institutions is an issue of faith. Because the truth of the matter is it does not require any faith to get a job. It does not require faith really. So it is easy, but this whole crisis is about faith. Righteousness is by faith. And faith, the prophet says that the greatest knowledge that one can obtain is the knowledge of what it means to cultivate faith. So faith is the first principle of all things. Faith, because without faith it is impossible to please God. We can't have the right clothes and dress like the high priest. And of the, the shirt sleeve to the wrist and the, 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 the garments to the ankle. But if you don't have faith, you don't please God all now. And that is the issue, you know. The issue is faith. So, Sister Tina, you know, do we love these children enough? Do we, do we love the children enough to say, boy, you know, I see the importance of using my faculties as a teacher to preserve the spiritual sanctity of little ones? to preserve the spiritual sanctity of teenagers, to preserve the spiritual sanctity of, 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 of preteens and other ages of children, and even the collegiate children. 
but 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 to do that you have to have a have a vision bigger than yourself and our vision normally does not go beyond ourselves it is about us having something to put in the bank and eke out a living here but 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 you have to be a kingdom patriot to 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 have a vision where the needs of others come before my needs and that is actually commandment keeping you know because none of the commandments are concerning themselves with you it is about love to god and love to your fellow human being that is what commandment keeping really is but in principle we don't think along commandment lines we normally think about self-preservation and one of my favorite statements from the pen of inspiration is found in christ subject lessons where the wonderful prophet beautifully says that the law of selflessness selflessness is the law of self-preservation and it is something as a principle that we need to learn the law of selflessness is the law of self-preservation we are thinking that going into these things and 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 trying to get more money is preserving ourselves is selflessness is going to preserve us and 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 we really don't trust God. We don't trust God just like the people of Israel. I keep going back to 1 Corinthians 10. The reason why the people constantly murmured and wanted to kill their prophet was because they never trusted God. And the Bible says in Hebrews 4 that they never entered God's rest. We love to talk about Sabbath. You think it's just not working on the seventh day of the week is God's rest? God's rest is faith-based. And if you are unbelieving, you cannot enter into his rest. You have never kept a Sabbath if you are faithless. You have never kept a Sabbath holy if you are faithless. Because holiness is by faith. Because holiness is righteousness. And only faith can produce righteousness. So we, we need to work on that issue of faith. Because it is the first principle in Christianity. Unbelief is where trouble entered into the race. Unbelief is why Adam sinned. And faith is what will restore us to the image of God. So it's not days and not eating pork and not eating chicken and all those things. It is faith. I adopt, I, I adopt the, the plant-based diet because God said it. And by faith, I want my diet to change. I'm not trying to prove anything to anybody. I'm doing it because I'm, it is an act of faith. I trust God. So if God says that is the best way for me to eat, I trust God. I change my clothes because I trust God. I choose my vocation because I trust God. And Enoch was translated from earth to heaven because he was a man who trusted God. It was a relationship. It was not about a religion. It was a relationship, a healthy, good relationship with his creator because he trusted him. That is why marriages work. It is based on trust. And that is where it breaks down when there is no trust. And God said he betrothed Israel at Sinai. But you know why that marriage broke down? Because the wife was not trustworthy. The wife was not trustworthy. The wife had no faith in her husband. So, so she used to just go a whoring with other men. Because she thought her husband couldn't provide for her. And that is the problem with us as a mother in Israel. We don't trust God. So we trust the government to give us gratuity and, and, and all those other things after a period of time and re retirement plan and so on. But there, there should be no confidence in that. Because the very bank system tells you that if it crashes and you have $20 million in there, you're not going to get $20 million left. They only insure you up to $1 million and they just announced that the other day before it was 600000 So you can have confidence in that system. You can have confidence in that system God is telling you to leave so you can grow your own provisions. And you are here living in the city talking about, oh, when I am old, I can look forward to pension. And you can hardly buy two loaves of bread when you get that money because it has been so devalued. Because we don't trust God. But righteousness is by faith, brethren. Now we have to understand what that means in a real sense. Brother Cash, we see your hand. Brother Cash? Yes, brother. Um, you, you, while you were talking about Earlier, when you're talking about leaving our vocations, and I just look at my my rise in my work because over the last two years, I've assumed the rank of an officer, and I've always wondered how would I be able to speak to some of these 
officers to bring the message, the Seventh-day Adventist message to them when you don't have access to them. So if I had opted and left the work, I would not have, I would not be able <laughs> to bring something to their minds. And why I'm saying this, we had a two-day officer training last, last yesterday and, and the day before. And somehow one of the retired officers came and he was talking about health. And we are told by the pen of inspiration that the health message is the right arm. And I was able to bring new start to the to, to the congregation of officers. And if I was not, if I would have left my job when when this whole reality of seven of um, country living became, I would not be able to. So, so if we don't have persons who are strategically positioning different um sects of life, we'll not be able to reach persons who God wants us to reach. So, so just as you are encouraging us, and that the Holy Spirit is leading you to encourage us, that it is not a want and leaving as people are told to leave. And I am I can tell you that I was encouraged by. I am um, an elder who is in charge of a present to ministry that I should leave my job and start up a ministry. But but his reality is not mine. And we it's like we are jigsaw puzzles in different parts of the God's big puzzle piece. And we, through his leading and guiding, must find where we are to work his vineyard. Amen. And just as you were speaking, my mind went back to um, a few scriptures. And as you talk about the faith of Jesus, the pen of inspiration says, the faith of Jesus, it is talked of but not understood. What constitutes the faith of Jesus that belongs to the third angel's message? Question. The answer is Jesus becoming our sin-bearing, sin-bearer that we might become, that he might become our sin pardoning savior. He has treated, as, he was treated as we deserve to be treated. He came to our world and took our sins that we might take his righteousness. And the faith in the ability of Christ to save us amply, fully, and entirely is the faith of Jesus. And I say amen. Amen. Brother, 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 Hills? Yes, yes, my brother. Just as my wife said that, you know, God will not move every obstacle or doubt, you know. Um, I don't know if it's doubt or anything or a brother express or so, but, you know, just in case, because, you know, persons might say certain things, you know. Uh, I, I, Daniel and, 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 and Joseph were slaves, you know. And so they, they had to operate the best possible way they could in the position they were. But we are we are we are, we are free right now. <laughs> so we can operate under the light that God has given. There are many other persons who may not have gotten certain light, you know. Um so you know, I believe it's best to let them operate where they are and such for but whereas we get certain light you know say boy you know say these industries and for deal with and what have you and a medical missionary and preaching the gospel supposed to deal with um we 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 have that information where as possible i believe we're supposed to move towards it and do as god said because otherwise if you really look at it if you really understand what it's saying and then we just say boy you know some of those truths are away it is actually disobedience. Um, there are a person who might not even have that form of information. God is able to raise up of, of the stones, people for um, um um talk and say X, Y, and Z to certain people. God have people everywhere. So we 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 can um limit God. God is limitless, you know, He has resources where we never would I think in would have other resources. Amen. He is God after all. So I don't know if that is what you were saying, but just in case, because that was what I was getting from it. There are other persons that might be getting something similar to it. So, you know. 
I, 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 I even even what you just you, you use a statement, brother, brother, brother here. You know, you use a statement a while ago that brought my mind to John the Baptist. And then why it says that this forerunner in the first advent was bidden by the Holy Spirit to leave the city of Jerusalem and go out into the countryside. And he was there in his desert place of solitude. And Sister White describing his work in, in the book, Desire of Ages, the chapter Voice in the Wilderness, said that, that John just started to preach to the open ear. And the Holy Spirit brought his voice to the cities. And crowds came out to listen to John from all walks of life. Publicans, Gentiles, soldiers, high priests, Sadducee and Pharisee came out of the desert to listen to John. And John never worked in any vocation in the city. So what is God saying there? You know, I, I totally respect what Brother Kashrian is saying because God allows us. I, 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 I make objects of art and I meet people. I meet people in galleries that I would not meet in a church. I get to contact people in different ways. But I also recognize that God is calling me to no servile work. So, 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 all things are lawful, but not everything is expedient. As we go on to, 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 to the closing work, there's a, there's a common um, quotation that medical missionaries like to use. That the time is going to come where no other line of ministerial work will be done but medical missionary work. And I can imagine that even in that context, the normal jobs that we would have had, we are going to have to make some decisions about those jobs. Even the other day, we like to talk about the vaccine war and COVID and all those things. People were being threatened on these jobs because they refused to be vaccinated. And God in even that was trying to warn us. In even that, God was warning us that, you see, we who are so dependent on these jobs, you are the first line of attack for the devil because he's going to squeeze you because you don't know how to survive outside of depending on them. So he's going to create a great squeeze. So God in his mercy, just like with country living, God in his mercy is weaning us out of this system, weaning us out of our way of life where we are so dependent on them because you will not know how to survive any other way. If you are dependent up to the final crisis on them and that is all you know, you are going to be in some serious trouble. You are going to be in some serious trouble because you have never known anything else. You have never known anything else and you have never allowed yourself to get to a point where you could see the hand of God taking care of you before that time. So if your character is just going to develop in that context. You have always depended on, on them to give you your Friday afternoon check after two weeks or a month, and that is all you know. And then you are just going to tra a transition to, to full dependence on God. Brethren, we, we, we don't need to deceive ourselves. God was weaning the people of Israel back then, and God is weaning us right now. God is weaning us right now. So for us who live in the city, <laughs> so for us who live in the city then, our plan is if, if I get a piece of land 185 miles away every day, I'm just going to drive to that job. But you know, we really need to sit and think about some of these things, you know. We, we really need to sit. That's why the prophet says we have to lay broad plans. Because sometimes we have some very narrow ways of thinking. And God is saying, these things are ensamples. All the people that Israel knew was Pharaoh's little salary package. It was an awful way they were working, you know, but they never were dying. You know, it, they, 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 they just were rewarded wages in the form of food and those things. And they said, you know, this Moses carried us out in the wilderness to die because we have to now trust God. And at least we were sure of the dinner. We were sure we were. And God never once allowed them to go to their bed hungry. And they were still distrustful. And why were they distrustful? 
because all they knew was the tyrannical slavery of Egypt. All they knew, and they were unwilling to exercise faith. So they trusted even Egypt more than the hand of God. They trusted it. They, their minds were so perverse. Their minds were so Can perverse. They mother. trusted the job in Egypt over God. They trusted it over God. They distrusted God. And they murmured and said, I am sorry that I left to come out into the country. I should have stayed in the cities of Egypt because at least I was sure of our food. I was sure of our dinner. And the Bible says, not brother Wazari, the Bible says these are ensamples, meaning they are types and symbols for who the ends of the world has come. So who is at the end of the world? We are the ones at the end of the world and these people are ensamples to us. And it's the same attitude that we are developing where we don't trust God. So while I fully agree that God can use and it is the, and it is the permissive will of God, God has used me in, 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 in galleries and in all of those things. God has used me in all of those capacities, in secular areas of business and so on. But I also recognize the seventh day of the tenth month and all of Adventism is built on that. Daniel 8, 14. All of Adventism is built on the, the, the tenth day of the seventh month. And the, the command says, in that day, you must do no servile work. So if, if the fast applies, the rest just don't apply. If the fast applies, and we jump on that fast enough, you know, because that is easier. Through self-discipline, we can arrive at that. But the other part requires some serious faith. You know? But brethren, if, if one part applies, the other part applies as well. You know? We can cherry pick. We, we can use it like a, like a, what do they call it, buffet, and just say, oh, this part seems tolerable, so X, Y, Z. God is calling us to a different reality, brethren. So, so what is our great plan then? Just work till one Friday evening we hear that the mark of the beast comes. That is what is going to happen. So if I, if I work down by parade and I get a, I get peace and land in St. Anne's Bay, up in the hills, I must drive every day from, from St. Anne's Bay to, to parade, get up early 3.30 and drive from St. Anne's. That is God's will for me, to drive from St. Anne's Bay every day and go to parade to work because I am just intrinsically bound to that job. We have to seriously think things through, brethren. You know, we have, to, we have to reason these things through. We have to reason it through, line upon line, line upon line, William Miller's method, line upon line, precept upon precept, here a little and here a little. Because there's a statement from the spirit of prophecy where the prophet of the Lord clearly says that when let the, let the merchants, let the merchants, the artists, the, 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 the financiers go to the country and establish industries so that other Seventh-day Adventists can get jobs. Why is the prophet saying that? Why is the prophet saying that? Because she understands that we have to create an Edenic economy in the country. We have to leave these cities and go out into the country and create our own economic system. That is what God is literally calling us to, you know. But we are dependent on their economic system. And I'm saying, brethren, you cannot stand in the mark of the beast crisis with that mindset. And God is saving us from the mindset. God is trying to save us from that mindset. But we, we want to be bound to them. And we want to be bound to their jobs because we can't see beyond it. What I am not saying I have to keep being careful. I'm not saying you must randomly jump out of your job and disenfranchise yourself. I'm not saying that. So I don't want anybody to misconstrue my words. I'm not saying that. But you cannot just go on till the end of time, not planning as to how in a practical and realistic way you will wean yourself from the breast of Babylon. Because if you are not weaning yourself from the breast of Babylon, when you cannot buy and sell, you are going to see something come out of your character. You are going to see unbelief and you will displease God. That is a fact. Because you, you, your character is revealing a crisis and if you are developing a character that is dependent on them and not God, you are going to see the results. of. You're going to see the fruitage of that belief system. You are going to embrace the mark of the beast. And that is why God in a practical way is telling us come out from among them and be separate. We're only limited to doctrine. 
but name one seven day Adventist pioneer that continued working for any secular entity until they died. Not one. James White never did that. James White, James White weaned himself from working on people's farms and railroads and so on. In the, in the infancy of his relationship to his wife, that is what he did to sustain his family. But you do not find James White doing that when he got older. He left that kind of life and went to work for God full time. And his wife could buy a home. He could buy a home. They had homes. They could take care of their children. They had buggies and chariots and all these things. Um, um, what do you call these things? Buggy and wagons and so on. God took care of his children. But they understood that principle from the tenth day of the seventh month. And, and, and we are challenging something that, that is there in scripture. So, so what is the application? If, 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 if my application is wrong, then tell me the right one. Because I really want to obey God, you know. So, so tell me what is the correct application of that. Thou shalt do no servile work. Because if, if, if the application is a, is a radical one and I'm wrong, you know, please furnish me with a correct interpretation. Brother, 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 Ian, I see your hand. Yes, my brother. It is so true that uh, many persons who want the, I uh, can't fathom the option of being, you know, the, uh, seeing that physical thing. You know, when the Israelites them, of the old days, they kind of wanted to have a, a physical God that they could see. That's like, you know, the majority of persons around. But no, we want a physical system in which, you know, I'm not trying to fling this one everybody, you know, or anything like that. But, you know, just to further what you were saying earlier, I want a physical system where we can say that, oh, yes, everybody getting paid and whatever you are, we get paid and such forth. I know of a young couple in which, you know, them unfortunately never really notice the count, you know, they're supposed to, before getting married and having children, they're supposed to have um them own a land, the man's supposed to have own a land and such forth and everything like that. So that already take place already. Um, they try, they might try getting a country, they might try clouding them in a country, but it's just not working out as yet. God not opening the, the door. When God opened the door, walk through that door. If God give you a country land and such forth, go. Um, also, they might, they might try to say, all right, then maybe perhaps, you know, you can do some servile work so you can build up a little funds and try to see maybe by that avenue still not working out strangely enough and sometimes things very difficult very difficult and what have you them have to be learning how to obtain food from all sorts of different things around them whether it be eating moringa moringa leaves or or or, or trying to cook taro leaves or all sorts of different something things that people wouldn't imagine for normally cook normally or whatever view so they just gather little things here and there and walk around and try to pick a little hockey where it is fully accessible and okay to pick um all sorts of different things you know and you know, sometimes things would write me in a certain time period. Like, you know, it seems like it's a right now, but then little later it's a right just when they need it out of you. Our money will pop up or so. They might find a little money somehow randomly in a pocket where normally the guy would normally check in pocket him all the time. Or when you end up on a little small survey work or what have you, and get some tip or what have you, and able to stretch or what have you. And then you really see the hand of God in those times because it just never go hungry like the bread and water being sure basically you know and, and it, it, it seems that god is teaching them a lot of faith lessons to believe the boy you know know where to come from lord but to know that you will provide today because there's no food and they make the prayer and things like that and say god thank you for the meal that we what we have today out of you are no food and they are sure by the end of the day there is food you know, there was no way they could actually physically see it or interpret that it would come. And I believe that is trusting in God. And I believe for them, that will be a very wonderful lesson. I believe somehow, some way, if we don't have, are not building up that faith, somehow, some way, God, if we are earnest in our work, will allow certain things to happen where we have to really be relying on the faith because we're going to need greater faith than even that in these days coming up on this land. Thank you, brother Heath. Thank you, brother Heath. 
I see Brother Williams and, and Brother Tony Bernard. Ah. Uh. <laughs> ah, uh, Bridget. Why, why, why? Brother, brother, brother Tony, brother Williams, brother Tony, brother Williams. Why well, I don't know if I should comment on your last point or not. Oh, uh, well, that's like just in his perspective. Huh? But, uh, um, <laughs> <laughs> uh, let me think, let me talk this from this angle. Um, yeah, you know, some, you know, I believe that God wants to teach us faith, huh? But sometimes I believe that, but sometimes I believe that we make things we make faith hard hard to learn than it should be learned, you know. Because there, as what I was mentioning is prophet that says we should lay we should lay broad plans. And as what it was emphasizing the idea of going back and forth from country to work in the town, which is really a waste of resources. Because the idea was that our educational system that we had was supposed to teach us, was supposed to prepare us. Um, for culture living in our words, we're supposed to, be, supposed to have, you know, an intellectual, um, intellectual education, we understand the maths, the, the, the science, the all that thing, but also a practical one, you know, the farming, to, to have mm -hmm. skills to our hands. So that when we move to the country, most of the, most of these, most of the difficulty would not, would not have hampered us. It wouldn't have been high. It would have been like an easy traditional. So if I had the education or energy right to, to have, we we'll move to the country, we we have moved the idea of, you know, we have started our business because we have been so prepared that we that, that we were able to help others move. The, the idea is not to go to the country and struggle and struggle and battle and struggle. That's that's an idea as far as says we should go. The idea of going to the country is that we should go that we should have been prepared. So we'll reach there. So now we're, before we even go to the country, before we even talk about farming, you should be learning about the farming, different seeds for for different months and seeds at the year, you know. Also, if the industry say you no, know, it probably takes six months to grow pepper. So there are six months I could be doing carpentry. Uh, there are six months I could be teaching. Huh? It's in our words, you know, God wants us to move a bit more systematically. You don't have to get up and do things as hard as we're going to find a situation in these things. Huh? And then we, we see that God trying to teach us faith. Huh? I mean, yes, God wants to teach us faith, but I don't necessarily think that God wants to put us through a lot of trouble to teach us faith. Because faith is not necessarily a hard thing to learn. Huh? You know, mm -hmm. it's one plus one equals two. You know, sometimes we believe we, we, that God is hard, that God wants to go to the worst of life for us to understand favor. But, but uh, that's, that's not necessarily God's ultimate plan. You know, his true plan. You know, God wants to actually get things done in the simplest way possible. You know, if, if, if you look at the lives of the patriarchs, especially the life of David, you know, you know, God didn't want David to, to go to the death of his son and all the issues. If David had followed um, you know, the simple plain the Bible, you know, they would have a, a he had been a prosperous king, uh, and uh, he wouldn't have many heartaches, uh, same as Solomon. Uh. So sometimes, you know, we bring certain heartaches, uh, and, and I think like we know country living would be a good example um, of doing things properly the right way. But, um, the, you know, back to the point that I was making, uh, you know, oftentimes we struggle, we struggle with the the scientists when they're doing our work part, you know, as what they were saying, the health farm and all these things, you have no struggle because those things are personal, you know. Anybody can do personal things. Even an atheist eh, can do, even an atheist can, eh, you know, eat right, eat, don't eat meat. Eh. Even an atheist can dress modestly. The, the, the idea comes you know, is that, hey, you know, when the plans come, the plan goes also of self, you know, this plan actually is going to benefit somebody else. Eh. I think that's where the Christian problem problem the problem is that hey you know i'm gonna do something that, that i'm gonna have is something um that's also have me and my family that's gonna actually benefit others and deal as a problem you know we, we are faith that god has his job we are faith for many things but do we have faith that god can help us help others you know because as well as the book of job the bible said job was perfect you know and job perfection was not this thing where, where see job prayed you know, don't is why when they start, don't is what the book of Job is start off with Job praying and Job doing Job all these ceremonial things. I would say that Job perfection was showing in how he benefited humanity. So in other words, perfection, you know, can't just be detached from good works. Perfection can't be detached from not helping others. And as the time comes to his son-in-law, the question is that 
you know, because I have a question, oh, when we know when we're sealed, when we know when our profession closes, you know, that shouldn't be the question. The question we should, we should, should be asking that uh, we should be in such a state of crisis that, that if our profession closes today, God will, God will have said, you know, this is my son in whom I am well pleased. And that's how we should live each day of our life. Are we doing the best for ourselves? Are we doing the best character? And are we doing the best for humanity? Because the Bible says the commandment hangs on these two things. Love for God and love for thy neighbor. You know, the love for thy neighbor part, the industrial work, the education reform, you know, the scientiums, all those, all those that came from the commandment to love thy neighbor and love thyself. And if amen, we ignore amen. these parts, you know, we are breaking the Ten Commandments. Amen. Thank you for that, Brother Tony. Brother Williams, I, I think I'll close on, on, on your comment. I'll wrap up um, past 9.30. <laughs> Brother Williams? Yes, good night, everyone. Um, you know, listening to the whole thing, and, and I, I, I say to myself, well, um, we, 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 we um, not doing any, any, are, are, are disregarding what has been said. But I'm thinking, the Bible says, it's just to live by faith. And there's a song I always sing, you know, he'll do it again. Just as it's done way back then. Well, most of us are supposed to be from like that. So, when God used to drop money from the sky, it's it, it not possible for man again. Is there anything too hard for God to do? Hmm. You know, so, um, Jesus made some statements, you know, and, 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 and I always look deep into it why he made this statement. He said, he that seeks to save his life shall lose it. Or he that loses his life for my sake shall find it. And in the last days, he did mention scenarios that create that your flight be not on the Sabbath. Now, based on what we see happening in um, countries around us, um, um, in the Middle East here now, and what the people are going through, and all that we've been discussing, I don't know. I, I don't think it's going to be a calm when the time of trouble comes, you know. We'll be, it's going to be chaotic. If we're running up and down, we'll be on the move. There's no time for settling and 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 and, and we, 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 the examples are being set right now, we, what we're seeing happening around in the world, you know. When the time, when, when the sun will pass and 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 them, and them send out um and send out the law when the law pass and 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 and, and them, them start to persecute and with all the technology that them have and all of this where where are we we gonna really hide or find time for settle or I, I, I want to understand because to me it does really sound it not really sound um feasible all uh, most of the things that, that I mentioned. Brother, 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 that is why the time to be doing all of that is now. Now is the time. That is why we should have been already in our plans to relocate to retired places in the country. We, well, should, have had a, we should have had a plan long ago to sustain ourselves while out there. So when that time come and, and it just hits us by surprise, it would not be overwhelming to people who have already been making their transition and laying their plans well in advance. Because that is the purpose why God gave us the spirit of prophecy, to make us pre-prepared for what is about to just take the world by storm. But we are yeah. not being taught that in church to a great degree. We are not being taught that in church, and anybody who wants to be honest with themselves has to admit that. It is not being taught to the congregations. So the people are ill-prepared for it. And then even when it is being taught, it is being met with great resistance because we recognize the level of faith it requires. 
we realize that we have to trust God. We realize that we are being called to trust God. And you know, when Antonio was talking a while ago, I said, why is it then? What would be the point of the prophet of God stressing that aside from academics, our young people should be learning trades? What is the overall point she was stressing? Why should they learn trades? Why should they learn these trades and not just academics? It is because the plan of God is to have a self-sustaining people. The plan of God is to allow us to sustain ourselves. And you know who got that plan before us? Some people call the Hebrews. And you tell me the Hebrews that you go around and see in Bill Express at the cashier registry. Tell me when you see the Hebrew in the bank as you're a teller. And Hebrews live in this country. Right. And where do, you, where do you find the Hebrews in this country? When Hitler took over Nazi Germany and started to, to, to annihilate Jewish people, where did Hitler get those Jews from? Did Hitler find them at the cashier's registry in somebody else's business? Hitler had to disenfranchise the Jewish people because the Jewish people were the prominent business owners of, of, of Europe. Where did they get that ideology from? Where did those Hebrews get that mindset from? Where do the Hebrews today get the mindset from? They should be a self-sustaining people having their own economy all over the world wherever you find Hebrews. Where did they get that mindset from? From the covenant promises right. and blessings and instructions from God. Even in disobedience, they, they still understood that. And Seventh-day Adventists, that is the modern Israel, still does not understand that mandate. And so... This is what, what I find now. I find that because we lack the independence of, of the world and society, we find that the third tend to kind of rub shoulder with, 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 with what's happening and the compromise. And we're under pressure, people under pressure because we're depending too much on, 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 on the, the worldly um, setup. You understand what I'm saying? The worldly economy, instead of being a an independent movement of God's people doing our thing. History is there, you know. What, when, 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 when you had Abraham and Moses and all the movement of God's people, them have them own herds, them have them own, them have them own resources. Remember, them come from the desert, you know. The desert, the people are used to survive, you know. You understand? All the them, all them just need, need that water, you know. Amen. And you know, so so you find say we 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 gone far from the mark. Amen. We're um, gone far I, from the mark. Thank you for that, my brother. I, I just want to read a statement before I close. It says here, from our let there let there be nothing done in a disorderly manner, that there shall be a great loss or sacrifice made upon property because of ardent impulsive speeches which stir up. An enthusiasm which is not after the order of God, that a victory that was essential to begin shall be for lack of level headed, um, level headed moderation and proper contemplation and sound principles and purposes be turned into a defeat. Thank you for that statement, R. And I want to re emphasize because we also have a habit of not properly listening to each other. We might hear each other, but we are not listening. I want to be very careful to say this. I am not saying, this is about the fourth time I've said it. I am not saying people just must randomly get up and leave their jobs. I'm not saying that. I'm not saying people should not save. I'm not saying people should not um, take their time and transition out. But what I am saying, and there is a plethora of reasons why I hold to this, and will always hold to this. In the tenth day of the seventh month, there is a command connected with it. The day of atonement had a command connected with it. Do no servile work. We accept that the fast has an application. All I'm saying Use the spirit of prophecy and the Bible to show that they do no servile work 
has no application whatsoever. Our educational blueprint was one that taught self-reliance. The true educational blueprint of the Seventh-day Adventist Church teaches that our children should learn trades in addition to academics. If that is properly understood, what it is pointing us to is to be a self-reliant people, not dependent on the people around us. Historically, that was not the cultural, historical experience of the Jews. While the Jews traded with other nations, you know, the Jews had their own jobs. The Jews had their own means of livelihood because they were a sustained, self-sustained people. That is what God was teaching all along. Through the first, second, and third decrees, which the third one caused them to restore and rebuild Jerusalem, it was for them to come out from among the Gentiles and to have their own autonomous system and their own autonomous economy. Under the first decree, 50,000 Jews went back to start the work of restoring Jerusalem. It is interesting that under the first angel's message, the same number of 50,000 left the fallen churches which constituted Babylon and joined the midnight cry. Why is God repeating the same number of 50,000? Could it be that God is showing us that the principles of the one, two, three, the first, second, and third decree are principles being repeated in the first, second, and third angel's message? The second decree was to create a distinction between the enemies of God and those who are God's children. The purpose of the second angel's message isn't to all like that Babylon is falling. And if Babylon is falling, God must have a true system. And the purpose of the third decree was to restore and to rebuild Jerusalem, which is the autonomous system that God's people had. They were no longer dependent on Babylon, neither Persia, Greece, nor Rome. Well, they ended up under Rome because of disobedience. They answered to Rome because of disobedience. They worked for Rome because of disobedience. The closer we come to obeying God as God requires, it gives us independence from the fallen systems of this world. And that is all I'm saying. The Amen. closer we come to God, that is a biblical fact. The closer we come to God, we gain independence from the systems of this world. The more we go away from God, we, is the more we rely on the systems of this world. So all I'm saying is that investigate it, brethren, before we cast it out. It might be, it might be inconvenient a message to hear. It might be a hard message to hear. It might be trying your faith, but do not just cast it out with indifference. Because God is saying something dear to us. All these Sabbaths spoke to things and principles. They were shadows of things to come. So they are either going to be shadows of things to come and they have spiritual applications or they do not. But how I understand it is that they actually do. They are pointing to realities to come. Adventism is built on that principle. You know, Adventism is actually built on that principle. So what I am not telling somebody to do is that if you work for the Ministry of Education, that this Monday you must leave. Brother Wazari did not say that. And it is unfair to misconstrue my words to give a different intent from what was intended. I know we are said anybody should just get up next week and leave their jobs. But I believe with all of my heart that if we are properly reading and studying what God requires from us, our educational blueprint, our health system blueprint, and all of these other blueprints and institutions, it becomes quite evident that God does not want us dependent on these systems. And I just put that out there. So, so, so we, we might have to keep working for all of these people for a while. But I really can't see the merit in working for them forever. I see Amen. no spiritual merit in it. And I don't see how it is going to work to your advantage in the long run. You, you, if character is revealed in a crisis, your character is built upon your thoughts and your feelings and your habits. And if your habit is to always depend on the system which constitutes Babylon, at the last minute, that habit will not break. 
At the last minute, that habit will not break. And that is just being practical and sensible. At the last minute, that will not break. So God is weaning his people. So I just want to put the proper context out there. So it is not misconstrued. I, I, am, I am being extra careful not to have my words misconstrued. And I know that is not a guarantee that it will not be misconstrued. But I'm okay. just saying that I am not saying people should just abruptly leave their jobs. I'm not saying that. I would, have, I would have demonstrated that I don't believe in that several times before. So I'm just saying you should actually have a plan to eventually make some changes in your life. That is fundamentally what I'm saying. God is calling us all to make some changes in our lives. Are we either are going to embrace that or we are going to reject that. But I see that in the word of God that he's calling us to embrace some changes in our lives. Changes in our location where we live and changes in how we conduct our lives. What if we go to a parish that, that, that there's no ministry office there and, and that is all we know? Um, what if there is no, no, no office for the Ministry of Education in a particular place or you can't find a job placement that you had in, in the city? You're just not going to live in the country then? And, and you know that, that job attachment is one of the main reasons People are rejecting the country living message. So, so it is clear that, that this issue of work has a lot to do with how fast we accept God's word. If we are honest with ourselves, this issue of work is affecting how fast we accept God's word. So, you know, um, uh, so, a sister means I see a hand. I just allow you to ask a question before I close. I see your hand. Yes, yes, brother Wazari. Good night, um, fellow brethren. Night, night. Um, I think <clears throat> I think it's a very good study about you know what it is that we we need to do. Um, yes, we need to prepare. The question I want to ask is, um, it's about the fa the the. The rest, no servile work should be done. So I hear what you believe. But what I'm asking, is there anything else that you can give from the spirit of prophecy or from the Bible? Or are you just extrapolating from your reading generally and understanding why you are saying what you are saying about no servile work so i just want to ask well, that question just that well, question i'd like to ask well a number all right a number of statements that i have previously read in this study and also in other studies point to the fact that we should be establishing institutions mm -hmm. and we should be even training our children to become medical workers medical missionaries nowhere in the spirit of prophecy are we advised that we train our children to work in institutions outside of our own. That was not the practice historically. So when we trained doctors and nurses, it was to work in Loma Linda, Andrews and all these other places. Historically, all these medical workers worked within God's system. The systems were owned by God's people and the workers worked within that system. That is what historically actually happened. Teachers were taught to become teachers to work in our schools. So a hundred and odd years ago, we wouldn't be sending teachers all to work for secular schools. Our teachers would find work within Adventist institutions. So all throughout the spirit of prophecy, when the comments are made about training workers, it was always to work within our system. And that is the actual historic context of how it unfolded. As the work expanded to other regions like Australia and Europe and new schools were established, the practice was that students were trained to be workers in our institutions. What we are now experiencing is actually a new paradigm where Adventists go to secular schools and get secular jobs. But it was not so in the beginning. 
we have transitioned out of what was God's ideal to something totally different. But we have been so far removed historically from God's ideal. We don't even know that a transition occurred. So it is normal. It, it's the norm for us to go to Calabar High and train at computer science and go and get a job at IBM or probably write something for G program for GAUTC or something like that. But back in those days, if we had the technology, our computer students would find some branch of work to use that skill in. But the modern Seventh-day Adventist is not experiencing that. The modern uh, Seventh-day Adventist goes out to work for the secular society. The average Adventist does that. One of the main reasons is because we don't know, we no longer have any Adventist institutions. So it is not a common thing to see a thriving Adventist institution. But in the beginning of our work, it was not so. Over time, we have divested a lot of these institutions. Schools have shut down, like um, Madison College, um, Westy, West Westy Bakery, or whatever it was called down in, in, in um, central Jamaica there over in Mandeville. We, we, we are a generation that came up not seeing this as the reality. So we believe the reality is what we are experiencing. We believe that is what God wanted for us to get a, get some CXEs and then see if we can squeeze in and argue with people for a break on the Sabbath. That, that is our current reality, you know. And we have a religious liberty um, department at the conference to argue for us to get rights to the Sabbath in their, in, in their institution. When in reality, we really should not be arguing them for a Sabbath half. Because we should be in an institution that recognizes the authority of God and his holy seventh day. But we are so trained to think backwards now that we don't even know what God's ideal is anymore. So that is what I'm saying. We have normalized something that is not acceptable in, in, in the grander scheme of things. Because historically, that was not the case. So that is why I kept asking the question. When these pioneers became seasoned, 1863 onwards, when the church was formalized, I kept asking which of these pioneers were for any secular entity. I was purposefully asking that because they transitioned out of that mindset once the truth came to them. Just like how they transitioned out of eating pork once the truth came to them they realize that they, 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 they have to operate on a different wavelength because more light came to them. So that is why Sister White, when she wrote about institution work in books like Councils and Diets and Foods, um, Country Living, Ministry of Healing, and these other books, she advocated the book Education, that the purpose of our education is not for this temporal life, it is to prepare workers that can be useful to God in this life and the next. So these workers that were being trained were being trained to work for God in one of his institutions. But that is not the reality for us. So it seems strange. What I'm saying now seems so radical and strange. But in the context of yesteryear, it would be normal to hear this. Because Madison College wasn't turning on people to go and work for for, for, for the United States government and secular society, Seventh-day Adventist students worked within our own organizations. And that is why we never depended so heavily on accreditation and these other things. Because at the end of the day, we never really were, we were never really looking for a job from anybody outside of our own system. But we have gone away from that. And because we have gone so far away from it, what I'm saying now, which was historically the, the reality over 100 years ago, sounds radical. It sounds radical. It actually sounds disturbing because we are not accustomed to thinking that way. But for people who are seasoned in that kind of thinking, and they have hundreds of years of tradition in that kind of thinking, even with the destruction of Jerusalem, they are still operating like that all across the world because that is how they were educated to think. That is why when Hebrew people came to Jamaica, they created that school up in the hills called Hillel Academy because they understand that they are, they are quote-unquote a peculiar people 
So they need to educate their own kids a peculiar way. And that is why Hebrew people in Jamaica don't go and work for the secular society. They control entities in the secular society and they are movers and shaker in, shakers in the secular society. But it seems too grand an idea for Seventh-day Adventists because we, are, we have slipped away from the old parts. We have slipped away from it. But there's a promise in God's word that there will be a restoration of the breach. And that is a breach. This mindset where we must go and build up economically other people and not build up God's kingdom. That is a breach in our thinking. That is all I'm saying. But I know it still sounds radical. So I guess I leave it here. But I hope I, I shed some more light, sister. Maze, as opposed to more heat. <laughs> Sister Mears? Oh, yes, brother. I was sorry. I was just going to type in the chat. Thank you. <laughs> okay. So I hope that helps. So, so, yeah, man, so I, I close on this, my brethren. I am not saying. I have to be so careful. I am not saying that anybody should run next week and leave their jobs. I am not saying that. I am not saying people should make unwise moves. I am not saying people should be um, fretful or fidgety and just run. What I am saying, though, is that I honestly believe without any reservation that this is something we have to invest time into looking into. Check it out. Weigh it. Measure it against Adventist history. Measure it against Hebrew history. Look at whether or not God wanted Hebrew people to be working for the nations around them. People who don't believe what they believe. Just look in the Bible and see if that was ever God's standard. Then we will know what God's standard is for us because he calls us a peculiar people and a holy nation. But what does that mean in a practical sense? What does that really mean economically? Because, you know, we are not realizing that the mark of the beast crisis is a religious economic war. And what does that really mean? How does that really look when we are standing as God requires us to stand? And that is why the prophet says that the institutions actually are going to prepare our people to stand. Why is that so? You know, so I'm not calling people to make rash moves and to, 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 to just instantly. But I'm saying start practically researching first and foremost to see if these things are true. Be a barian. Do some studies and look at this thing especially look at the, the, the quotations concerning raising up institutions. Look if there's any validity to it. You know, despise not prophesying, prove all things and hold fast to that which is good. If it is good. If it is good, hold fast to it. Lay broad plans. I am sure I said that. I'm sure I said that. So I believe in writing business plans and I believe wholeheartedly by, by, by not only by ideology, but by practice. I believe in that. I've learned how to write them. And I never started my journey knowing how to write them any at all. I saw the import of understanding more though. Because over and over, I, even when I just became a Seventh-day Adventist, I came into Adventism. Brother Schooler would probably remember that. I came into Adventism under persecution. When I came to Edna Manley, I was only convicted about the Sabbath and an Adventism, but I was not a baptized member of the Seventh-day Adventist Church. And I started to keep the Sabbath without even being baptized. And one of the repeated things I went through is that I was at a school, an institution with teachers who were atheists and never respected anything about the Sabbath. And teachers decided that they would persecute me for my belief system. And one of the things that kept coming up is that if you people meaning Seventh-day Adventists. If you people want to keep your Sabbath, why is it that you don't have your own things then? Why is it that you don't have your own things? And I realized even from the infancy of my Christianity that it is important for me to be self-reliant as a Seventh-day Adventist believer. One of my friends, one of my close friends, his first job was getting a job. Uh, well, he, he did an interview at a, at a, at a, at a secular graphic agency. 
and they said, you know, Sabbath is one of our busiest, Saturday is one of our busiest days. And sometimes you are doing a campaign for Burger King or you're doing a campaign for KFC and so and so. And you will have to come in when we have these deadlines to meet on the Sabbath. And he said, boy, the Sabbath is, is, is a deal breaker. And her words to him also was why your people don't have no own things. And it was very instructive to me from back then, over 20 years ago. And I realized the importance God was planting that in me from over 20 years ago. And Virgin, I, I see this problem with us where we are fighting and giving so-called testimonies about, oh, you know, my boss don't want to give me the Sabbath and my boss don't, and you know, they want to fight and Virgin pray because they want to take away the Sabbath. They want us to work on Sabbath and so on. And we are fretting over these things. But are we supposed to be fretting so much? Or are we supposed to be trying to find a broader solution and to lay broader plans? Is it God's ideal for us to be fretting as to whether a man will give us the leisure of being able to worship him on a Sabbath? You know, the only time I see God's workers negotiating over Sabbath is when they were slaves in Egypt. And they had an unreasonable boss called Pharaoh. The only time I ever saw a negotiation over the Sabbath is when God's people were slaves. Find something else in the Bible when they were negotiating over Sabbath keeping. When Sabbath keeping became a problem and Pharaoh said, you want the people to rest Moses. Show me any other instance when they were in good obedience and good standing with God where they had to negotiate for Sabbath keeping. So brethren, I'm just saying, you know, you have good, better, best, you know. I have God's permissive will, but you have God's perfect will. And I don't know if we should be aiming for the permissive will or we should be aiming for God's perfect will. So I reinforce again, brethren, I'm not saying anybody should just abruptly. I really hope we all walk away with a proper understanding of what I'm saying. I'm not saying people should abruptly just leave their jobs, but I don't think you should be so comfortable in that job. I'm going to be honest with that. Based on all I'm seeing in scripture, I don't believe we should be so comfortable with these jobs. And that is my honest conviction. So, brethren, let us think on these things. Let us pray. Our right, Assembly Father, we thank you for the study tonight. God, I hope that more light was shed than heat. And I pray, God, that we will honestly look at these things. What does it really mean to be the head and not the tail? What does it mean to be restorers of the old parts? When your people entered the promised land, God, and they got your blueprint, was it to be self-reliant and self-sustaining as a nation? Or were they still tethered to the nations around them? What was that reality? Because all these serve as end samples for us upon whom the ends of the world come. God, if I speak according to my own spirit, let no impression be left on any mind. Let it be rescinded from their minds. But I pray, God, that if you through the Holy Spirit impress these words upon me, I pray, God, that they will linger in the minds of every hearer and that every person will actually go and do their own research, honest research about what we were as a people to see the actual blueprint. Did we really work for the secular societies and institutions around us? Or were we kingdom workers? Are you calling us to build up the kingdoms of this world? Or are you calling us to build up the kingdom of God? Because you gave us a government when you gave the, the, the Philadelphian church the key of David. It is clear it is a government according to Isaiah 22, verse 22. According to Isaiah 9 and verse 6, this key of David that was placed on Messiah's shoulder is a government. Isaiah 9 and verse 6 says the government shall be upon his shoulder. And if the Philadelphians are the generation just before Laodicea, then what is this government, Lord? What is this government that we will be a part of? And a government has its own economic system. 
I pray, God, if I speak according to the movings of the Holy Spirit, that you will impress this truth upon your people. Because we must be kingdom people and we must be kingdom born people. And the kingdom of heaven is within us. It is not some ethereal thing that will become a reality in the distant future. We start the kingdom here on earth because the kingdom principles are in us. The kingdom of heaven is in us. The kingdom of heaven doesn't come by observation. It is inside of us. So Lord, if it is according to your spirit and according to your word, make this revelation clear in the minds of your children. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. Good night, brethren. Tomorrow morning, we, 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 we gather together again. We gather together again to, to look at the fourth chapter of Daniel. Really some very important points came out. You know, a lot of points came out about the authorship of, 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 of the fourth chapter of Daniel. And we continue the discussion tomorrow as we continue to learn. So God bless, brethren, and take care. Have a good night. Good night, good night. Good night, good night. Night, night, everybody. Night, night.